what is TypeScript basically? So TypeScript is nothing but a superset for the JavaScript. So everything that you can do with JavaScript that you can also do with the TypeScript. On top of that, you can also have additional functionalities like it's a strictly type checking, then it will provide you the object oriented functionalities. It will provide you the much more modularization using which you can write large uh, or complex application very easily and much more on top of JavaScript. It will help a developer to write the code in a much simpler fashion and uh, in a much uh, syntax error free uh, way, we can say. So let's understand how exactly the TypeScript is used and why there is a need to use the TypeScript. So let's understand here with an example. A developer is writing a code in JavaScript and just trying to build a website. And uh, he is doing that, then he is pushing it on the internet and then the users over the internet using it. Now, here, the JavaScript is known by developer. He is writing the code in JavaScript all the users over the internet are having javascript in their browsers it could be mobile it could be tablet pc whatever it could be they're having the javascript is being already installed that's the reason they're able to read the javascript based website now the developer here is saying that i am having a couple of issues with javascript what are those like uh, it is not giving me alerts for the errors as early as possible uh, then it's also saying that like it's not much object oriented way so i'm not able to write the much complex operations so these are all the drawbacks from the javascript that we will discuss separately in the upcoming videos now so the developer wants to use the typescript here but the main problem over here is that we cannot ask all of your users to change their devices to start supporting the typescript there are billions of users, billions of devices which supports already JavaScript. We cannot randomly directly ask them to change it to the TypeScript so that they can start supporting the TypeScript. So here is what the TypeScript plays a very good role. What is that? Now, our developer will not write code in JavaScript in which he was facing some problems. He will write the code in the TypeScript. And now when he is writing the code in TypeScript, when the code is get compiled, it will give you output in the JavaScript itself. And now the JavaScript can also be understood by all the devices over the internet present. And this is the way we are solving the problem from the developer side and not also not affecting our users to change their devices. And here is the TypeScript solving a major problem here for the developers, which will help now to write a bigger code and everything in a much simpler fashion. How the JavaScript works. We'll just try to write a simple JavaScript file here uh, for the sake of understanding how we write a code in JavaScript and how the different variables will be created, how we attach with an HTML file and how it will be helpful for a website for its working. And once we are doing that, we'll also check how the type safety issues will come here, how the syntax checking is missing with the JavaScript, how it is not much readable and maintainable when you're writing a large chunk of code how the object oriented principles are missing over here in the JavaScript and how the compilation problem is there with the JavaScript. So let's try to write a sample JavaScript file here. And before I start here, I would like to say in this particular lecture, whatever the code we are writing, this is just for your demonstration, like how the JavaScript will function and how the issues we face with the JavaScript. So you shouldn't be writing any code in this particular module. What is the code you need to write? What is the setup you need to do for the ID, Visual Studio Code? for the maybe node, maybe for the TypeScript, for whatever it could be that is in the next module. So you should just watch right now and understand what are the difficulties are coming up with the JavaScript. So let me just start writing a sample code here. Let me initialize an index.html file and let me just use a quick shortcuts here that we'll discuss later. And here is an HTML5 syntax where I'm able to get all the head and body section. And let me just say over here, Oh, hello world. Yeah. Fine. And let me just see the execution of it. Yeah. I'm able to see that. I'm simultaneously also opening the console here to see the JavaScript output and all. Uh, so let me also write a quick JavaScript file here. So I'll name it as script.js. And here I'll say hi 
from JavaScript file. Here we go. Right now, I need to attach this particular script.js file with my index. So, what I need to do for that, I just need to write a quick script tag here. I should mention I want to use script.js here in this particular HTML file. And now, let me just refresh it and confirm my JavaScript file is getting executed. So it's a very super simple functionality here, an HTML file with a small JavaScript file here with the name script.js, which is saying hi. And we have attached it with the HTML. Now let's try to have writing some code here, which causes some issues to understand us. So let me just say here, a variable called marks equals to 10. Okay, sounds good. Let me just console it now and confirm everything is working fine. Yes, everything is working fine. Now, what as a developer, I'm doing a mistake here. Let's say I'm writing a very big code and I'm just doing a quick mistake here like this. Instead of mentioning the marks here in the upcoming line number third of this code, I'm mentioning my name inside a wrong variable. Is it complaining anything to us here? Is it giving any syntax error to us here? No. And now, if I just see the outcome, it will directly say my name here, which should not be an intended functionality. So this is the way at the time of development, due to the lack of syntax issues and everything that JavaScript won't highlight. So here the problem is that it's a variable which is holding an integer value. Why we are giving a string to it? It should not be done. But we are doing it and JavaScript is not identifying that. And why it's not identifying, it's not, uh, it, it's not a problem we can say from the JavaScript, it's a behavior of the JavaScript that it's very much lightweight and it won't apply much validations and everything. Uh, it just try to be much lightweight so that it can suit on all the devices. It's a functionality from the JavaScript, but as a developer, when the size of the code and everything we are increasing, we are having these issues from our side as a developer. Okay, fine. So this is what the type safety issue. It's an integer and we are assigning a string, but JavaScript is not complaining us. Let's try to discuss the next one. The lack of syntax checking. Sounds good. The lack of syntax checking here. Let's say I'm just saying here instead of marks, I'll just say here name. I'm just saying name equals to now in here. So instead of name, I'll just use student name because name is some other inbuilt keyword which is causing some other issues i don't want to put that complexity over here in this example so i'm just randomly using some new variable and just assigning a name to it and just trying to print that let's see the output yeah we are getting but we haven't declared it yet but still we are using it right it's not good if you have learned other programming languages or something as a scripting, so we must declare the variables first before start utilizing it. And that of course necessary, right? Because uh, in upcoming code, I may even do by mistakenly something like this. So what's happening here, whenever you are creating, whenever you're using a new variable, it is automatically getting created in background. That's what the JavaScript behavior, but it's not good from a programmer perspective. Whenever I'm going to use a variable, I must declare it first, then I should start using it. So if I'm using a variable like this, the compiler, or I should get some syntax error, this variable is not being initialized or maybe, sorry, it's not being declared and we are using it directly. So this is what the one more problem, something called syntax checking. This is with respect to only the declaration, but there are other many issues with respect to uh, that like JavaScript won't provide you the syntax error as early as possible. Uh, let me just give you one more example here in that case. So let me just write a quick function here and just uh, name it. It's a function one. And let's say it won't accept any parameters. And I'm just saying log i from function one. Sounds good. Let me just comment out the above functionalities and let me just say here like call the function one i should get an output high from function one here yes we are getting now let's say by mistakely i'm calling the function two instead of function one it's not complaining anything like we don't even have the function two javascript is, is not checking that and if you just 
uh, hit this particular file and just see you are getting the error at the production at the runtime when it's performing an execution it is saying that function 2 is not defined something like that but we should get that error over here so these type of syntax taking and everything is not available with the javascript which is causing the developers nowadays to handle the complex scenarios and it's getting much difficult with just writing the code with javascript so here the developer should be much more cautious on all these things as uh, javascript is not highlighting these issues let me just discuss the next one it's not readable and the maintainable for the large application so of course with the issues we discuss when we are going to write a large application here with much more complexity and everything maybe it could be any algorithm or something so it's not much feasible and the readable to write the code in the javascript so that's what the today's convention of the developer with the javascript now due to these issues and all next it's missing with the object oriented principles of course it's a way uh, way long very old uh, scripting language and uh, uh, it's a very much lightweight and everything uh, for its day to day usage because it's supportable in all the devices so it can't put much complications in that otherwise it will get overloaded and it will be difficult to run the javascript on all the devices so it won't having much functionalities with respect to the object oriented principles it could be inheritance it could be classes it could be interfaces it has with a limited functionality but it is not having the great functionalities like java c++ uh, c sharp vb.net we can say uh, to create the much complex application with the javascript next it's don't have the direct execution like the way i have given you the example here if we are writing a code here it is not going to compile anyway you just need to save your code there is no compilation in between and you just need to directly run it it means the direct execution and if any errors are there whatever the good part you will only understand when the execution will happen so here are the few difficulties and issues that we discuss with the javascript and to solve these issues and everything uh, the javascript will keep releasing the new versions and everything that we'll see in the upcoming lecture uh, for now we'll stop in this particular uh, video and i'll uh, request you you can also experience these issues but no need to write much complex code here this is just to understand the uh, issues that javascript is facing see you in the next lecture Here we'll try to understand the JavaScript different versions. So in the previous lecture, we have seen the issues which are coming up the, with the JavaScript. So of course, to resolve these issues and everything and to perform the more performance improvement for the execution perspective or the, for the developer simplification, the JavaScript community will keep releasing the new versions. But of course, it won't cover, cover the problems that we discussed, but internally to have the performance improvement and more things, it will keep releasing the new update to suit the new requirements so i'm just randomly googling out the javascript version in that it's of course a good practice whenever you are uh, doing it just try to cross check from the two to three different sources too so that you will have a good understanding and you'll also uh, learn how to get most out of it from the different sources instead of relying only on few sources i have seen many students who are continuously relying on a same resource so later if they see any new resource it will be a bit difficult so here we'll try to understand the javascript versions from the two different resources one is from the w3c which is the mostly used one and the second is the gigs for gigs one so let me just open the javascript versions here from the w3c so it is saying that when it is first started when it is the what is the latest the first one is called es1 and the official name of it is es ecma script of course the student i found it they are confusing what is ecma and what is the javascript and everything ecma script is the javascript only the official name of the javascript is ecma due to some of the association something who founded in some founded that so they have just kept an official name and in general it is called as javascript so the first version of that is released in 1997 then 98 and the more and more and right now all the major browsers started supporting es5 and the es6 so what is the next generation javascript called right now is es6 and all the latest version after that es6 so there are a couple of issues in the javascript like it won't support the latent constant keyword previously it won't have the strict mode in this particular es5 
So they will just keep releasing all the new versions. We'll just try to see one of the year in the years three. They have added the try catch mechanism. So we generally know how what exactly the try catch mechanism to avoid the crash in our code. We use the try catch. So previously it was not available up to the ES2. Then they have released in ES3. Then they, they they were not having the JSON support till the ES5. They have added the JSON support in the ES5, and due to due to this JSON support, many REST API calls and everything made much simplified from the front end to all the developers in many different lang uh, frameworks like Angular, React, and many more. After that, they also introduced few more new things coming to the latent cost in the ES6 that uh, we'll see a, a very detailed lecture of that. What's the difference between latent cost and, and what's the requirement of it? On top of that, they have also introduced few of the new functions in the array and more. And they keep releasing like this, the new versions of the JavaScript. So we don't need to be much worried about the JavaScript new versions, but why we are looking into this? Whenever you're writing a JavaScript code, you might face something like uh, this is not supportable or in this particular JavaScript. So let's say you're just trying to use the let keyword and you're writing the code in the ES5. So of course you will get the error like let keyword is not supportable or maybe unknown or maybe you're trying to use the array.find array.index which is not available in the ES5. So if you're figuring out any error like this, so you should immediately strike like there is something version mismatch. I should be checking which version I'm using and what I want to use that is available in which version. This is just will help you for the debugging purpose because many times we'll just debugging for hours and hours and then later we'll figure it, figure it out. The, the one that we are trying to use is not available in the version that we are using. So that's the reason it's important to just go through all of it. Let me just also open one more resource for this particular that is gigs for gigs here and it is also giving the same it's giving you the when with which version got released what are, what are the different uh features they have introduced in the different javascript here it's almost similar i'm just trying to give you from the different perspective so that you should get an idea and also having a habit to learn from the different resources so in the next lecture we'll see how exactly the typescript works and how exactly the typescript will solve the problems that we are facing with the javascript and we'll also see the typescript versions and all see you in the next lecture so uh let's try to understand the typescript here so we have seen typescript is a super set for the javascript everything that you can do with the javascript that you can also do with the typescript so I'll just write a sample code, a simple one page TypeScript code and uh, try to execute it. Then we'll also try how the type safety will be covered with the types uh, script, how it is, it's going to do a well syntax checking, how the code will be more readable, maintainable, object oriented and the compilation happen here. So this is just an example. Again, no need to write any code. This is just to understand how the problems in the JavaScript we are solving with the TypeScript, a practical demonstration for that. So let me just open my code window here. And uh, here is our HTML and the JS file. That's a previous one. So let me create here a new file called script.ts here. Okay, here we go. And let me just say a console hi from TypeScript file. So of course, I'm not going to run this particular file because we just want to understand the syntax and everything, how it well shows us in a head uh, while compilation. Uh, if I just want to execute this, I'll execute. Let me just delete the JavaScript file. Let me open the terminal here. Of course, this you should not be doing. And let me just say here, ts.script. Yes. So here is what how the compilation happened and whenever you are doing the compilation as we have seen initially whenever you compile a JavaScript file will be created and this will see in the later upcoming section. Okay, so in this particular JavaScript file, we don't need to do anything. So let's delete it and the, here is our TS file and the same problems we faced in the previous one. Let's try to introduce now. So I'm going to use the marks variable. Let's say 10 and I'm going to console it. Okay, so everything is good, fine. Now, as we have seen in the last one, the data type mismatch problem. 
So if I say marks equals to your my name, so it's immediately started complaining. It's immediately started complaining that marks is a variable. It is not assignable to a number. So this is a string and you can't assign it to a number. So this is what ahead only we are getting the issues identified in the development. This is what a developer needed when they are writing a bigger application. And here is a, what the first thing we are solving with the TypeScript that is called type safety. If it's a number, then it's a number. You can't assign a string into that. It's a very strict coming to the its data types. So if I can make it 12, that's fine. But I can't make it a string here. That's fine. Let's go to the next one. Well, syntax checking. Again, to understand that, if I'm writing a student name here again, a variable which is not declared directly, I'm trying to use it, it's not going to allow us. So it's immediately saying us cannot find a name, something called student name. Of course, this is not a, uh, it's a very small code. You will say like uh, there is no use out of it. But when you're writing a bigger code, let's say this particular marks itself, I'm making it 11. That's fine till now everything. But if by mistake, I'm making a spelling mistake here or maybe something, I'm removing S here. So it's much more needed in this case. That's it. So here is how the well syntax checking is, is been done. By the TypeScript here. After that, uh, one more example for the same. We can say if you are writing a function, the same one that we have done previously, I'm writing a function one here. Let me just quickly console here and uh, function one. Let me call it. Yeah, everything is good and immediately started complaining when I'm trying to call function two, which is not available in my code. It's immediately si saying that cannot find a name with function two, whatever it is, this particular symbol, this particular function, I'm not able to find. This is what we are getting the errors ahead before we are putting it into the production. So after that, making it more readable and the maintainable, of course, uh, it has the object oriented things. It has the many more things coming to the namespaces, modules, which will help us to make it more and more modernize our application. Uh, when you're writing a complex application, it will help you to do that. And the code will become more readable and the maintainable with the TypeScript. TypeScript is also having many more object oriented functionalities like classes, interfaces, inheritance, after that decorators generics which will help you to write the complex application in a much simplified object oriented way then compilation first then execution so it's a good example here it is doing the compilation first before it executed if you are if you are having some issues here it will stop you at compilation itself it will not uh, uh it will not permit you to perform the execution because you're getting the errors here itself and in compilation there are many flexibility that typescript will provide us there is a separate configuration file will be there something called tsconfig.json there is a separate module for us uh in this particular course to discuss on that how the compilation should happen how much strict it should be so overall always remember one thing whenever the compilation happens it is just trying to put some compulsion it is just trying to get all the errors ahead of the execution itself that is what the typescript is going to do nothing else apart from that okay so i hope you understand how the typescript is solving the problems over here in the next video or uh, in the next lecture we'll see what are the different versions are available with the typescript see you in the next lecture so in different typescript version different features and solution the TypeScript community will keep providing us. So let's understand what are the new versions are available with the TypeScript, what are the versions that we are going to use, what are the differences between different versions and all. So here is the official website for the TypeScript and uh, I can just go to here called Handbook and uh, let's navigate inside the what's new. So the latest version which is available, the stable version when I'm recording this particular lecture is 5.1. Before 5.1, there are previous, like all these you can see, and mostly people use 4.0. All these versions won't have any major update. It will have the small, small update. It could be a new functionalities added. It could be new functions added, new libraries added, but the core functionality will, will remain always same.
if you just want to understand what new things came in a new version of the TypeScript, you can just come here and see if you're just attending any interviews or if you're just attending any new examinations. So you can just go through it like what's the new version available for the TypeScript and what the new functionalities available in that. It won't hamper any core functionalities. And one more interesting thing that I would like to highlight here. So we have seen something called all the JavaScript versions. Okay, these versions. So as new JavaScript versions are releasing, of course, the TypeScript also need to release a new version of it. Correct, because the, the TypeScript is a superset for the JavaScript. So let's say a new version for this e ECMA 2020 is getting released. So of course, in some days, TypeScript will also release a new version of the TypeScript to support the new version of the JavaScript. So it's not only like uh, whenever the new version of the JavaScript is released, the TypeScript will release its new versions. Of course, for the internal improvements and the performance related things to solve the bugs, the TypeScript will keep releasing the new versions. So what we learned out of this particular lecture, there is no need to worry on which particular TypeScript version we are running. Of course, just you need to be cautious on if you are getting any error, this particular option is not available in this TypeScript. You can just go to the documentation and let's see we are using which version and the function that we are trying to use is available inside which version. That's all in this particular lecture. In this module, we'll understand how we can do all the setup which is required to start writing the TypeScript. Very first thing, we need a good ID. Of course, you can use any ID of your choice, but I strongly recommend to use the Visual Studio course, which is mostly wide use and which will give you a much more simplification, a darker mode to work on it and everything. So let's quickly search for the Visual Studio code. You can just go to their official website and hit a download button from here. It's available with the Mac and Windows and Linux as well. So it's a pretty simple, straightforward installation. So once you are done with this particular installation, uh, you should be able to see a window, something like this, where you can see all the VS, co VS code. Initially, it might ask you some few permissions. You can just click on allow it at the time of installation. Once you are done with this ID installation, the next steps comes for the Node.js installation. So we, we are not using Node.js anyway in our this particular course, but to install the TypeScript, we are going to use the NPM and NPM is available with the Node.js. So we just need a Node.js environment. We are not going to use anything out of Node.js. We just need the NPM so that we can simply install the TypeScript. So how to install the Node.js? You can just quickly search Node.js and it's an official website, nodejs.org. And I'll recommend always to download a stable version, the LTS. Don't download the current one because it might have the bit of difficulties. Recommended for the most of the users is the LTS version, which is a stable version. And at the time when you are downloading, when you are seeing this course, you might see the more latest version of this particular Node.js, but it doesn't matter. You can just download the latest available LTS version. After downloading, downloading this, it will straightforward give you the next, next, next step by step option for the installation. Keep all the defaults selected because it will do some path, uh, environment path setup and everything. Don't change anything and just continue the installation. Once you are done with the installation, you might need to restart your uh, VS code or maybe restart your Windows machine. Mostly it happens with the Windows machine. Uh, and when you should do that, I'll tell you. So in this particular VS code, when you're opening, you just need to go here, terminal, new terminal, and here it will show you. Uh, select an appropriate folder here where, where you're going to work. I have just selected an introduction folder here right now. And uh, let me just confirm the node got installed successfully. Yes, the node was installed successfully and for me, the node version is 16. For you, it could be something different. Also along with this, confirm you are able to see the NPM version out of it. If you are not able to see this particular NPM version here, it means your installation didn't succeed. If it is showing success there, you might need to restart this VS Code window once. If it is not still happening, try restarting your machine. If it's still not ha happening, then you must Google and check on Stack Overflow the different issues you are facing and get your installation completed. Make sure you must get this NPM version listed here for installation of the TypeScript. So this is how we are installing the VS Code and the Node.js. In the next 
lecture, we'll see how to install the TypeScript from the NPM. Before installing TypeScript locally, let's quickly set up a folder structure that we are going to use throughout this course. So very first thing inside this particular VS code, I'm going to file open folder and I have created a new blank folder called recording here. And inside this particular folder, I'm going to create the first one that is called introduction. So this is my first project name. I'm saying something like that. So I'm inside the introduction folder here and hit open. So I should be able to see it's a complete blank. Initially, I'm having a folder called recording inside that introduction. Then I'll keep creating the new one inside the recording folder. So this is my pro folder structure. Now let's try to install the TypeScript. For the installation of type TypeScript, it's super simple. You just need to go to terminal here. Yeah, make sure you're inside your project folder here. And let me say here, npm install TypeScript. And I'm saying hyphen hyphen save tape. So we are using npm node package manager for the installation purpose of the TypeScript here. And we are mentioning hyphen hyphen save hyphen tape. Why we are using that? Because we just want to install this as a development dependency locally over here. We don't want to keep it as a production dependency. So no need to worry about that for now because it will be useful when you're going to deploy any application and everything and make it more performance improved way. Important here is to install the TypeScript. Let me hit an enter here. It will take a couple of minutes for you. For me, it is super fast because already it is installed for me. It is just updating few of its components maybe. As soon as I'm doing this, uh, it's giving me a couple of options here, a couple of folders and everything got created. We'll not look into that detail. Before that, I would like to have a detail called TSC hyphen hyphen version. So I just want to confirm the TypeScript installation is perfect. So it is showing me the version that I'm having that is 4.4.4. .4. What exactly the TSC? It is TypeScript compiler. For you, it could be a different version depending on the which version you are installing. So no need to worry about the version as we have seen in the last lecture. Coming to the folder structure which is got created here, it is giving the node modules inside which I am having the TypeScript library all the files that we don't need to even look into that detail. It is also giving the package.json and the package.log.json. It is all npm related, these package related, not to worry anything out of it. We just need to use this TypeScript compiler for our compilation purpose. So let's create the first file index.html and let's use a quick shortcut here for the HTML. Okay, so it's giving me header, body and everything. Let's say, oh, I updated something else. Okay, fine. So let's say a quick heading here. I want to create a functionality here called Hello world. No, oh, right. Okay, let's try to execute this. And uh, for me, the folder structure is pretty different right now. It's under the recording, introduction, and then index.html. Yes, I'm getting my hello world here. Perfectly fine. And now create the very first the script dot ts okay and let me say console file from typescript file sounds good okay and uh, here is our html file now the html file won't support connection with the ts right it should only be connected with the javascript file so we'll do that conversion and before that how we can compile this ts file we'll see first so here's my ts file which is saying simple console log let me just compile it with the tsc you can just observe here tsc i'm mentioning let me just make it up so tsc i'm saying the script dot ts file i want to compile it's giving some issues here Oh, there is a spell mistake in the script here. Give me a second. Oh, it's again wrong. Yeah, script.ts and let's try to 
run it now yeah the compilation is successful as soon as we are doing this very first thing you should observe you are getting an automated js file and this is what the magic of the type script let me again delete this particular js file hit the tsc script.ts compilation is completed and your js file is ready now i can use the js file to attach inside my html let's do that script source and i want to use the script.js here and let's see the outcome yes hi from the typescript file so the code we are writing in the typescript is getting compiled to the javascript and then our website is working and this is what we have seen in the initial lectures how the developer is writing code in typescript and getting converted to the javascript and then we are using it in an html automated way so here is the magic from the typescript of javascript conversion one important thing whenever you are downloading the zip file from the resources of any particular lecture or the module uh, so that you can see what code i have written and you want to execute the same project on your computer so you will be getting a zip file like this from the resources after downloading this zip file you can simply unzip it then you should be able to see something a folder with appropriate name and inside that these files will be there Please make sure in this particular folder, you will not be able to see node underscore modules because that's a heavy weighted file that I intentionally deleted before putting this particular zip. And once you took this particular folder, I'll tell you how to get it back using npm install. So hope it is clear. The zip will be like this. You need to unzip it and your files should look like this. So this is my zip provided in the resources that you're downloading to get the exact code that I am doing here if you stuck somewhere I recommend not to get my code always because uh, always you will be simultaneously coding with me so of course whatever the in, uh, outputs and the code I am writing you will be getting as it is so it is only necessary when you are somewhere messed or something you are not able to get appropriate output you should be doing this let's see uh, opening this particular folder now inside vs code it will look something like this and uh, here let me just clear out this window and if i just try to see this particular html file and this is my javascript file let me just delete the javascript file here and if i just try to hit here the tsc script.ts okay it is getting created this particular javascript file but for you it will not work because the the typescript is installed locally for you so it might not work for you when you're installing it locally and you will miss other dependencies of the project right now inside inside this project we are only having a dependency for the typescript library that's the reason it's working for us but to get all the dependencies which are inside our package.json right now we are just having the typescript here so that's the reason we are not having any issue so to do that you need to run npm <coughs> install so it will be creating the node module folder like this and now you can you are free to do the, your next things if you are having a bunch of list of dependencies for your project all will get downloaded over here and if you want to also share your code with someone else you should be deleting this particular folder because it will be of many files which includes all the libraries of course that will be regenerated when you do the npm install so hope it's pretty clear how to get the zip code that is provided in the resources and make use of it. One good extension that you should apply while writing the code that is Prettier, which is a code formatter. It will help you to format your code in no matter how many spaces you are giving, how many extra lines you are putting over here. It will automatically format your code. Let's see a quick example. So here I'm I am giving a lot of lines extra then also the extra spaces extra tabs and everything so the code won't look much nice with this and when we are writing a large lines of code it will be a big mess with this so of course we need a code formatter which will systematically format all these lines and code with proper indentation and the proper extra removal of the lines so you need to go to the extensions here and let's search for prettier your code formatter so this is one of the well-known uh, code formatter that is being used by 
many developers across the globe. Let's install it. Yeah, perfect. And now let's come back to this particular HTML file. As soon as you're coming here, you just need to right click and click on the format document. As soon as you do, uh, so for me, it was already previously installed and the previous settings was there. So it was not asking me which format that I want to use. So for you, something like this option will be visible. So which one you want to keep it as a default. So for me, already the pre tier code formatter is a default one. So for you, it will ask with this window. So you just need to click on pre tier and your document will be formatted. So now no matter how many extra lines, how bad indentation you are using, you just need to right click and click on the format document or you may use the shortcut here. Let me use from my keyboard now. So, okay, one second, I'm just missing with the shortcut, I guess. Yeah, it's done. So from mouse, right click, format. And you can also use the keyboard shortcut. So when your teammates are also using the same code formatter, so no matter how bad indentation uh, habits all the developers ha are having, if all of you are using the pre tier, so for everyone the code will look similar and the review process when you will look the code of any other developer and everything, it will be very easy for your understanding. So your, uh, it's an optional one, it's not a compulsory, but it's better to use and we are going to use this throughout the project. One more good extension that we can use that is material icon theme. So whenever you are uh, using these files and everything in front of these files, you might be observing here, it's showing the TS, shows that it's a TypeScript file. With the brackets, it's showing it's a JSON. With these opening and closing uh, brackets, it's showing it's an HTML file. Uh, so it's a bit confusing here. It's a default one that is coming with the VS code. So we can use some additional extension here to have the symbols in a much more different way and a, a more meaningful way. So let's go to extension here and search for material. Yeah, material icon theme. So you just need to install it. Yeah, and the by default, you I want to use the material icon theme. It is also giving me the option to select the previous one that is a VS code default. So I'm selecting the material icon theme. That's it. And now if I open my file explorer here, you can see it is showing it's a TS file, it's a JSON, it's a JSON, it's an HTML. So it's a pretty straightforward. I don't need to even look at the extension here by looking at these symbols and icons. I can easily understand. It will help me when I'm creating the thousands of files. So the working will be more simpler when we are having more colorful icons and everything like this. So just an easy identification, nothing more compulsion. It's a complete optional one for you as well, but it's better to use. Basic compilation. In this particular module, we are going to learn how the compilation for the TypeScript works. So there are some necessary files like tsconfig.json, which will help us for the compilation configuration, how we can initialize this particular file, how we can set up a watch mode, and uh, in this particular tsconfig.json file, where we can set up the configurations for the compilation, it provides different variables and different flags to us, which will help us to customize the compilation behavior. Of course, we are going to see the basic compilation behavior here in this particular module. And once we have gone through all the detail and the working in the upcoming module for the TypeScript, we have also having one more advanced module where we are going to see the advanced compilation where we can put much more type based restriction and many more other factors are there that will help us to write a better TypeScript code and compile it in a more efficient way. Let's understand here something called as watch mode. So we have seen how to compile a TypeScript file into the JavaScript, but every time we are doing this particular compilation manually, so how we can automate that. So for that, there is a facility given by the TypeScript compiler that is something called as watch mode. So here is our TS file where we are writing hi from the TypeScript file and I first need to compile it. And I need to mention which particular file I want to compile out of that the JavaScript file will come up and then it, we are attaching it to the HTML and then we can see our output, this one. But let's see now I'm changing here something called updated. Let's save it. And if I want to go here and check, 
it will not give me the updated JavaScript because I have to again do a compilation here. Then if I go here and check, it will be an updated one. So how we can automate this process? So for this, we can say watch or the short form is only W. So now it started in the watch mode and uh, let me just again, just update here like update one. Let's refresh the window. Yes, it's update one. Let me just do update two. And you can see as soon as I'm doing the save, let me do it from here instead of keyboard save. You can observe my terminal here. So save. It's doing the quick compilation here. And if I just refresh my page, I'm getting an updated output. And constantly this particular JavaScript code is getting uh, is coming out of our TypeScript file. The compilation is happening automatically due to this particular watch mode. Now here, let's say we are adding one more TypeScript file. So in that uh, there, uh, we are having one more issue here. What is that? Let's say I'm adding one more file here called validations.ts and uh, let me just mention here hi from validation ts5 okay and uh, i'm just closing this particular watch mode how to close that control c okay so now i also want to attach that particular file validations over here as well so validations so right now i don't have any particular validations file uh, yeah the javascript file i need to compile my typescript code let's do that okay now let's see the output we should get both the previous one and the current one hi from the typescript file the previous one and hi from the validation let me just make it more clear hi from script file And high from the validation ts file okay i need to again do a compilation for this one getting both of both of this high from the script and high from the validation now the problem over here is we can just apply the watch mode at a time only on one file we can't apply on the two over here if i apply the watch mode on script.ts here let's say updated one let's save it see the outcome yes we are getting but on the same moment if i go to my validation ts file and mention here updated one no it is not getting updated we have to again manually compile so the problem over here is we can just compile at time only one file with the watch mode that we are using so in the next lecture we'll see how to create a complete project with the typescript which will help us to compile whole typescript project all the files present in that and have a complete project compiled at a time let's create a typescript project now till now we have just created a typescript files which are completely separated from each other we haven't created a typescript project so everyone was individual and we are compiling it individually so if i want to create a typescript project or in an existing project if you if i want to initialize a typescript project i just need to mention init or uh, tsc init command how to do that let me just open the terminal here and mention tsc hyphen hyphen init so it is initializing a typescript project in this particular folder make sure you're inside your project let's hit enter here for you it might ask you a couple of questions what you would uh, what the project name and everything depends on the type type compiler version you are using for me it's just taking the default one and i can see here it is giving me the tsconfig.json file so this is a very important file using which the type script compiler decide how to perform the compilation it will decide with the various factors here like what the javascript uh, target version they need to be uh, should be used for the conversion how which particular module should be used which folder should be considered for the compilation after that whenever the compilation will happen how the outcome in the javascript should be done different formats out of it how strict the compilation should be the null types the function parameters and everything so all those compilation behavior how strict your compilation should be 
is everything is decided over here inside this ts config file we are going to understand this ts config file in a very simplified way and only two to three flags we are going to use now and we have a separate module later to understand all these functionalities in very much detail so for now uh let's say tsc hyphen hyphen watch so uh, okay before this tsc watch what i will do i'll just delete my javascript files here uh yeah these are the two javascript files okay overall i am having how many types of file one is validation.ts and second is script.ts so when i'm just hitting tsc the typescript compiler without any file it is compiling whole project it is compiling all the ts file which are present inside my project and it is automatically creating the javascript equivalent code for all the ts file let's see quickly again let me delete the js file and you can again observe here i'm just saying tsc it is generating all the javascript file so here it is solving the problem that we are facing in the previous lecture so along with this i can also mention the watch mode so now what will happen the previously we were having a trouble here for example if i'm just mentioning here updated to same let me just confirm the validation updated to is coming yes it's coming and let me just go to the ts file of the script and mention here updated to and refresh yes it means throughout my project if there is any ts file and if i'm doing any change in that automatically this this is getting compiled all the project and we are able to see the updated outcome because it's it's compiling the whole project let's try to change few of the options in the ts config.json here so interestingly there are few options here inside ts config.json i'm going to pick up something called no unused locals let me just uncomment this what's the meaning of it so it is saying that if there are any unused local variables inside your function so the uh, give some compile time error there should not be any unused local variables so when it's saying true it's saying that don't allow that when you're saying false so it's okay to have unused local variables inside your function let's quickly uh, first of all let it be commented so that we can see the default behavior here i'm just going to my script.ts file make sure i'm in the ts file here i'm not going to remove this comment let it be the console and uh, i'm just randomly writing a function here i want to give the name called uh, on add and uh, i didn't want to give any parameters here this is just a sample one i want to create and uh, i just want to initialize a variable called let's a equals to 10 and that's it fine so we are creating a variable here and we are not using it at all correct let's go to the ts config file here and just turn on this particular restriction and let's see immediately i am starting getting one error here what is that it is saying that a is declared but its value is never read and it's true there is no use of this variable we are making we can write thousands of lines of code after this but if you are not using this why you have written this so typescript is giving you a head only a notification or error if you are not using it please remove because it's a unwanted variable that you have put here a unused one and you, you you don't want to this behavior to be happen we can just make it false so typescript will stop compiling uh, stop uh, giving you the error for that so using this ts config file you can customize the compilation behavior in this way hope you have understand how the uh lo unused local variables flag is used one important thing i would like to highlight here let me just enable this field again and uh, let's this error come here yes error is coming and here i'm creating one more variable called 20. it's very interesting to see i'm not getting the error for the b i'm just getting error for the a i'll just give you a minute to think on it why we are not getting the error at this place fine why we are not getting the error at this place if you clearly read this particular flag here it is saying no unused locals it is just applicable for the local variables and what is meaning of local variable the variables which are present inside a function those are the local variable 
these are the global variable there is no flag for such something like for the global one it is just applicable for the local so hope you have understood this flag the next config that we are going to see is no unused parameters here before we proceed one important thing I, I would like to highlight whenever you are changing any particular configuration previously we have changed this one right so uh, once you are done with your trial and error and everything just again comment it back and keep it the default which was previously why this i am saying because when we are uh, changing all these configuration and everything there are a lot of many configurations if by mistakely any other configurations are turned on and in upcoming lectures maybe some unexpected behavior or unexpected compilation behavior you might observe so that's the reason i strongly recommend whenever you are just done with your trial and error again set it back to the normal one and comment it out so let's see the no unused parameters here what's the meaning out of it let's go to the ts file here and this is an on add variable sounds good so i want to say it's a number one number two okay so i'm taking two parameters here that is n1 and the n2 but i'm not using it any out of it very correct okay so if i just go to the ts file here the ts config and just say it, i don't allow any unused parameters immediately the compiler started complaining there are these two uh the parameters are there for this particular function that is declared but the value is never read for that so either you remove it or start using it because there is no meaning out of it we are just accepting it we are not using it so this is very correct from the logical perspective we see this is something called a developer mistake we can say and if you just want to remove this error and ignore just turn off that flag that's it let's see the new one configuration that is called no implicit returns how it works and what it's used so let's come back to this script file and uh, Let's quickly write a function here and the name of this i'll give compare i just want to compare to numbers and return whichever is the bigger one so if n1 is greater than n2 let's return n2 else return n2 it's n1 here okay i just want to return the bigger one now in this case there are two possibilities either the code will go here or the here fine so both we have covered if by mistakely i'm not writing a written statement over here by mistake i'm not writing a written statement here and if i just uh, save this code and everything by default it's not giving me any error so what's going to happen when the n2 is bigger it's not going to return anything so this particular function will not behave in a correct way so we, we we need to turn on some configuration here if you want to check the errors like this so for that there is something called no implicit returns so let's uncomment this and make it true let me save immediately one error i'm getting here that not all the code path return a value so it's very clearly saying that this particular function all the code path there are two code code path available for this one is this one and second is the this possible only two possibilities are there it is saying that all the possible code paths are not written in the values and this is the way due to this error we are getting to know like this particular function can misbehave in production when n2 will be bigger and now we can repair our error with this way and for now again we'll just keep the configuration as it is like previous and leave it Let's understand about setting up a debugger in the TypeScript code. It will help you to troubleshoot your errors and see how the different values are getting changed when your code is running step by step with this particular debugger. There are multiple ways in the TypeScript using VS Code you can set a debugger. We are going to see the debugger which is the default comes with the Chrome along with the VS Code here. Let's see how to do the setup for it. Very first thing, uh, to enable the debugging in the settings you need to turn on some option called here source map here this one so what it's going to do here it's going to create a source map files for the emitted javascript 
Of course, we are going to debug our TypeScript code. Who is understanding the TypeScript? Our VS code. Who is running your application? The Chrome. So when the Chrome is running and you want to apply the debugging, it can just identify the JavaScript file, but you want to see and the track your code from the TypeScript. So this particular source map is necessary for that. So make sure you're turning on this particular source map for this. Let's save this configuration. As soon as I'm saving that, due to this particular watch mode is activated for our TypeScript compiler, I can see here one .js.map file got created. So right now we don't need to go in much detail about this particular map file. We can just understand it is just acting like a bridge between our TypeScript and the JavaScript so that we can, it can help us to perform the debugging. Uh, technically for the Chrome or our VS code, we can say uh, it's just acting something like a bridge. Let's quickly create a debugging here. So I'll just remove this and let's create let a equals to 10. Then I'll say let b equals to 12 here and let c equals to a plus b. And I'm just going to console the c option here. So let's apply the quick code formatter here and save it. Uh, here we should get an output call 22. That's coming very correctly here. Now I want to apply the debugging over here and I want to observe what are the values are coming up at this particular stage here. So I just need to hit here something called a red dot here before this particular line number seven. Yes, so we are setting up a debugger point here. So whenever the code exhibition will come, it will stop here and we can see what are the values are there inside C, A and B at that particular moment. Just go to the run option here and click on start debugging. When you are doing it first time, it will ask you which particular environment you want to use. So here I'm selecting the Chrome one. Don't select any other one because others are having again different configuration. We are going to see the web app Chrome. For you, it might give you just Chrome, depend on the different versions of the Chrome, VS Code and the TypeScript you are using. As soon as I selected this, it is giving me some configuration file here. You can observe one VS code folder got created here, dot VS code inside that launch dot JSON. And very important field here that is called URL on which URL it is going to apply this debugger. We are not having any active live server running here. We are just having our HTML file. So instead of this, we need to put our HTML file. So just come back to your Chrome window and copy this particular path here and paste it here. For me, it's coming very long due to I'm using the MacBook. It's having some internal other folders. So we just try to keep it something like a C drive, D drive, a normal one. If you're using the Windows one, that's it. Let me save this configuration and run start debugging. As soon as I do this, a new separate window will come up. Let me just open that window and show you. For me, it came on a different scheme. Give me a minute. Yeah. So this is a new screen that came here and where uh, it's just spinning and spinning. Why? Because if I open my VS code back again, I can see here the debugger breakpoint came here and our processing is stopped here itself. And now I can observe what's happening at this particular line. If I just click here and just go to the global here, it is showing me the value inside the variable A is 10. The value inside the B variable is 12 and the value inside the C variable is undefined. Why it's undefined? Because still the processing of this particular line is not completed. So here it is also giving an option to move next, move back, step out and step in. When they step out, step in, everything will be used and step over. When there is a function, you want to go inside that function or you want to come back out of that function without going inside all these options. So you can just do a trial and error here. I'm just uh, using an option step into here to just go to the next line. And now I should get the value of C because the execution for this is completed and I'm able to see the 22 here. If we want to observe this behavior in more detail, what we will do, we will just stop this uh, debugger again. And instead of this breakpoint, I'll quickly apply a for loop here, which is saying a let i equals to one. And just otherwise, just make it a traditional one. I is less than five and I plus plus. And just want to console log the I variable. Let's apply the formatter here. That's it. 
and I want to apply the debugger over here. Now I can observe how this particular for loop is rotating five times or it is iterating five times in detail now with this debugger. So start debugging. Yes, done. And now it's showing uh, it's came here. So initially I will be zero. Let's come back here and uh, try seeing these values. Let's uh, mention step in. Give me a second. Let me just make it move forward. So we should get some I over here somewhere. Just, yeah, I. So I is equal to zero here. That's perfectly fine. Then it's doing a console here. That's also very good. Let's move to the next one. Again, it is coming back on the line number nine. It's interesting to see here. You can also see this particular log is printed here, zero. Now the I very the very uh, the value of I should be one. Yes, the one. Again, it should go to the console. Again, next. Again, it is checking I is equals to or less than equals to less than five, whatever it could be. Yes, the condition is true. Again, it's making I plus plus, making it two, and it's complete. It's doing this, it will do this five time, and when this is done, that's it. It's coming out of the loop and it's printing the line number 30, and we are over with this execution. Let's stop our server. So, in this way, the we can apply the debugger in the TypeScript file. And just to remind you the steps again, let me just close this server. Very first thing you need to go to the TS config, you need to turn on this source mapping, true. After that, you should able to see this script.js.mapping file should come automatically here when you're setting it to true and saving your file then you just need to go here run and start debugging you need to select the chrome window and rest all the configuration and important here is to set this particular url to what is the url which is coming in your browser for me it's uh, it's this url so hope the debugger will help you in the upcoming sessions Let's understand the basic data types supported by the TypeScript. So TypeScript allows three basic data types that is string, boolean and the number. Apart from this, there are two more which are added recently in the new releases that is big int and the symbol. So in this particular model, we are going to understand how this basic data types will be used, how the type assignment will work, it is implicit or explicit, in which case it applies implicitly, in which case we have to explicitly mention and all of that. We'll also try a few examples here uh, to understand all these things in more detail. Before starting with the data type supported by the TypeScript, let's try to understand with a quick example in JavaScript, if you are not using the data types like a TypeScript, what are the issues will come and how the code will become more and more complex and how in production it can fail. So I'm just opening this JavaScript file Please be sure we are in the JavaScript file, not in the TS file. So let me remove all the code which is generated previously for one of our previous code. And here I'll just try to create a quick function and the name of this I'll say like a uh, add function. And I just want to uh, or add or I can say compare. Okay. And uh, I just want to take two numbers as a parameter n1 and n2 and here i just want to perform like if n1 is greater than n2 then i'm going to console n1 is bigger else console n2 is bigger let's apply quickly a formatter here So now, if I want to call this, I'll say compare one comma two. That's it. How the output, uh, 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 the outcome for this will be? Let's see. N two is bigger because of course we are sending one comma two here. It's saying that uh, N two is bigger. Now, uh, one one thing that we should understand here, if I'm providing a string here instead of a number will it work yes it's a javascript it won't much bother about the data types and everything so it will of course work here 
and uh, ideally it should not work because I can also give anything something like this and let's again run the program and let's see it's again saying n2 is bigger even in n2 if I am just randomly dropping something here it's still working and it's not a correct behavior we can say because we wanted these number uh, n1 and n2 to be always an integer uh, for this comparison so in javascript if you want to apply this validation so I, I, I need to say here like if the type of n1 is a number along with that the type of n2 is also a number then only perform this comparison okay or else just say invalid input now let's try to see the outcome we should get now this invalid input in this case getting it invalid input how it's working so we are passing a string we are passing a string okay so the type of this particular variable is number no n2 is a number no so it's just going here and saying invalid input so let's try to pass a valid inputs now yes we are getting n2 bigger let's try it in a different way n1 should be bigger now yes and now let's also try to perform in this way now i'll just give you a minute to think on it what will happen yes so what what will happen let's save this and see the outcome it's saying invalid input even though it's a number but it's in a string format so what is failing here this is failing and how this particular type works type of so we can just do some console and understand how the these types will work and everything but for now i i guess you understood how we are applying a manual validation if javascript is not performing any validation and this is what the trouble comes with the javascript and now in the next upcoming lecture we are going to see how we can solve this problem with the primitive data types provided by the typescript let's try to understand the basic data types provided by the typescript now so now we are not going to write any code in the javascript because we need to understand in the typescript so i'm going to open the script dot ts file and we are already having a lot of code here let's remove it and uh, i'll just try to quickly uh, create the same function that we have done earlier that is called compare and i just want to compare two integer values here so previously we have mentioned in this way and uh, <coughs> as soon as i do this here it's started showing some errors it is declared and never used and everything that you should be getting to know now now that is due to the ts file configuration that we have seen earlier in the previous module so let's ignore that error for now and say if n1 is bigger than n2 so say n1 is bigger or else n2 is bigger let's apply a quick format here it's still showing an error what's the error parameter n1 is implicitly has an any type yes and this is what we are trying to understand if you are not mentioning the data types for this particular parameters here these particular variables which are available as a parameter here it started showing you error the typescript is not able to understand what data type it should consider for it so let me explicitly mention here n1 you are a number n2 you are also a number now the type script is getting a clarity n1 is a number n2 is a number and then okay fine i can perform the uh, the greater than less than operation and everything and i can happily call it now compare let's say one comma two so we should get n2 is bigger of course it's still showing an invalid any guess why it's showing let me save this file again refresh it it's still showing the invalid you should guess it now yes why because we are not running our typescript in a watch mode so let me just run the typescript compiler 
in the watch mode so that the continuous JavaScript files will be created with this compilation. So let's save it now. Yes, N2 is bigger. Here, now previously as we did, let's try to give a string here. As soon as I'm giving a string here, it started complaining. What it is complaining, let's try to understand. Argument of type string is not assignable to the parameter of type number. It's very clearly saying that you are passing a string and I'm expecting here a number. It's not allowed. I'm not going to allow you to call this function. So now there is no need to write the additional complications here like the type of of n1 should be equals to equals to number and all this that we have done previously. So these are the benefits with the TypeScript we can say and we are explore if we have explored only one data type that is number till now. Let's try to explore the other data types. So this is just a number. Let's try to create a similar one that is for the string. Uh, for string we'll do in some different way. We'll create a separate function and we'll say concat. So So we want to perform a concatenation and for that I would like to give S1 as a string, S2 as a string and here a console log S1 plus S2. I just want to combine both of this. Let's try to call this concat. Hello. Hi. Let's see the outcome. Hello and hi. Now we are interesting to see if again I make the same mistake, it's not going to allow me. I'm passing a number, it's accepting a string. That's perfect. And now one more remaining that is a Boolean one. So for the Boolean one, let me create a flag here. Let's say this flag will is having a data type of Boolean. And I can just add a true and false into that. I can just say true or the false. If I try to give any other value apart from this here, like a string ABC, it's it will give you the error. String is not assignable to type boolean. If I also try to give any number here, it will start complaining. Yes, and let's try with zero. Yeah, for zero also it's like it's it, it it compulsory need a particular boolean value that is true or the false. So let me also try to do one more operation here. Let's say one is less than two. If I do, what will happen? If I write here the expression like this, one is less than two over here. What will happen? Any guesses? It will give any error or no? Let's try to do. No. Because the outcome of this particular expression is going to be in boolean value itself. Pretty clear? Perfect. So we'll see the next thing in the next lecture. We'll try understanding the next basic data type from the TypeScript is big int. And after that, we'll also see the symbol one. So why exactly we need the big int here? So we need to understand uh, when the limit for the normal number data type will ex uh, will over and when we need to start the big int for that. So let me just open my script.ts file here. Let me just erase all of this code and let's say let n equals to uh, some random number. Okay, and I just want to console it sorry so and let me confirm the outcome here yeah i'm getting my value here the problem here is this particular n is a number so of course it will have some limitation but what is that limitation so to understand that limitation if you just google out what's the maximum value supported by the number so you will get to know the maximum number the, which is supportable by the number data type is 2 raised to the power 53 minus 1 and that is this value. So let me just copy this value over here. Okay, everything is well. I can also see my output here. Perfect. 
as soon as I increase one single number, let's make it 92. I am started getting error. What is that error? It is saying that it's not supportable. It's more than my possibilities. Like I'm not able to store the number above this because I'm just limited to the number which is up to 91 itself. If you want to store something bigger than that, then you of course need some other data type for that. So for that, we need to use the big int. So I need to replace, uh, let me just make it two. Now we are getting the error here, like two raised to the power 20, 53, whatever it is. And uh, I need to change the data type here and I need to say it's a big int. After making big int, I'm again getting one more error. The type number is not assignable to the type of big int. So of course, the way you mention the big int and the number is different. So when you want to mention it's a big int number, you have to say a n over here. And when you are saying n at the end of this particular literal, at the end of this particular number, it is saying that it is not supportable over here. Why it's not supportable? So you need to again understand there are different versions of the JavaScript. We have seen the ES5, ES6, and inside that also ES2020, ES2026, uh, so like that. So these things are only available, the big int is only available, uh, which are above ES2020. So if I want to see my TypeScript code is get converted to the JavaScript, so what target version we are using. So for that, uh, we should go to the tsconfig.json and here I can see that. So here it is saying that I'm targeting to the ES5. So let's make it ES6. Be very careful with this. Save. And now this error should go. Uh, it's still not going. Something is missing here. Give me a second. I think more I'm missing here. ES. Uh, okay. ES2020 let me use. Yeah. So this particular is supportable only in the ES2020 minimum and on top and beyond that. So that's the reason uh, we are getting the issue till now. And we are, we are not going to use the big end. And I'll also request to immediately change this configuration again back to the ES5 because it's a normal uh, configuration that we are going to use throughout the project. This I just changed to show you the big end, how it works. So let me just remove this error also. So hope you understood the big int and in the next lecture, we'll see the symbol one. Let's try to understand the symbol data type here provided by the TypeScript. So let me just start fresh here and say it as S1. I want to create the symbol and I need to call symbol with its constructor. And I can also give a description to it. What exactly the description of this particular symbol. I just want to say it's a key one. I also want to create one more symbol called S2. And the name of that I want to give as key2. So these are the two symbols I'm creating. This is just creating a unique identifiers we can say. And uh, if I say console S1 equals to equals to s2 so i just want to compare if both are exactly equal symbols so of course it's not an equal symbols both are so we are getting a false over here i'll just reduce uh, i'll just remove this particular line over here it's constantly disturbing us in this particular outcome okay fine so we are getting an output here that is called false here so now if i just make it key one and the key one both symbols so I'm creating exactly two identical symbols with a similar description, key one and the key one. What will be the outcome? I'll just pause for a minute. So let's think on it, what will happen? So let's save this and see the output. It's again false. What we understood with this. So it doesn't matter what description for the symbol we are giving. As soon as possible, you're creating a symbol it means you have created a unique symbol. So what's the use out of it? Of course, it's used in advanced programming, advanced scripting with the TypeScript that is used in different libraries. Also, there are different inbuilt symbols are there. there are so right now, it's not a good time to discuss on this because we are just learning the basics with the 
TypeScript. So only the intention here is to introduce the symbols. There are these things are also available that can be used in advanced scripting as well. So hope there is no confusion with this. It's super simple. It's just creating a unique symbol when we when we are using a symbol data type with this. Let's understand the implicit and the explicit type assignment in the TypeScript. So uh, let me just create a variable called n here and uh, I'm saying number, it's a 10. So what we are doing here, we are explicitly mentioning that is this particular n is a number. So this is something called an explicit type assignment where we are mentioning explicitly like it's a number. Let's suppose I'm not giving this particular number. So now in this case, the TypeScript compiler itself understanding n is a number. If you just hover your cursor also, it will very clearly tell you it is considering it as a number. So even though after this, you're trying to give it some string here, it will not accept because this is implicit type. Uh, already they have uh, TypeScript is assigned as a number as an implicitly. So it is equivalently to this one. So it is just our comfort, like either we are giving or the TypeScript is giving. So what are the first value you are assigning based upon that the TypeScript will implicitly assign the data type for a particular variable. Uh, let's understand also with an interesting example now. So I'm saying let n. And this time I'm just declaring a variable. I'm not assigning any value to that particular variable. So there is no data that we have mentioned to the variable n. Okay, so let's carefully observe. I'm saying n equals to 10. Everything is valid. Everything is fine. Perfect. So n is a number. Sure. So let me say n equals to abc. Should it start giving me error now? No, it's not giving me the error. So I'll just give you a minute to think on it. Why in this case? When we are assigning it's a number, so of course it's a first assignment, it should become a number data type, but then again I'm doing it something like a JavaScript, changing my data type of a number variable. It should not allow me in the TypeScript. So think on it, I'll give you a minute how it exactly it's happening. Yes, so the reason for that, if you just hover your cursor on this particular variable and it will show you, it is by default considered as an any, when you are not uh, assigning any value so TypeScript don't have anything to understand what data type it should implicitly assign to it so by default it assigned any when you are just declaring a variable and not initializing it so this is equivalent to the syntax and that's the reason it is accepting a number as well as a string so hope you understand how the implicit and the explicit type assignment is working in the TypeScript In this module, we'll try to work with TypeScript with different objects, arrays, literals, tuples, then enums, lices, union, and many more functionality. Uh, by combining all together, we can write a very good scripting and a powerful scripting that is suitable for any complex application. We're also going to try a few of the examples which combines all of these functionalities together and we'll cover all of these things in detail so that we can understand the power of TypeScript with these features in detail. Let's try understanding the object type with TypeScript. So generally just to store the name, we use the string to store the number. We are using a number data type and then true false for the Boolean. But what if we want to store the data all combined together? something like in for example employee data so we need something called as an object here it is similar kind of thing that you might have seen with any other scripting or the programming language for, with respect to the object oriented but it has some pros and cons with respect to that we'll just see how a basic object will be created and how the uh, values inside uh, that object are initialized and the use so let me just create a basic object here so I'll say the object name is employee and uh, I'll directly start assigning values to it. And these particular curly bracket open and close are indicating it's an object. If I'm just mentioning here 10, 
it's a number 10 literal it's a number if i'm mentioning a curly bracket open and close like this it is indicating it's an object right now it's an empty object and that's also perfectly allowed fine so let me just enter the name of the employee here so let me mention emp name here and the name of the employee i want to give in this way okay in which company this employee belongs i also want to give that information so i'm going to mention company name so abc fine so here is an object which is having an employee information with its name and the company after that one more uh, info i'll give let's say for example salary i'll just mention a quick number over here that's it so we are having a number and the two string all combined together inside this particular object now let's try to quickly console this employee object and let's see how the object is also visible in our console yep we are able to see the object very well here the company name employee name and the salary here uh, now let's try to play around and just try to get the employee name out of this particular object so if i just say okay fine i'm able to get the employee name out of it and i just I, uh, now i should just get the name of the employee out over here in this particular console now yes we are able to get it it means we can access one by one one by one all the values over here now it's very interesting to see what is the data type it is being used implicitly right now why i'm saying the data type for this particular employee object is implicit because we are not explicitly mentioning the data type let's again revise the implicit and explicit data type assignment so we have seen something kind of this previously so implicitly the typescript compiler is doing a number data type it is implicitly assigning here so what implicitly the data type is being assigned for this particular employee object so i'll just pause for a minute and you can just think on it what implicit data type is being assigned okay so let's try to hover your cursor here and see so the typescript is implicitly assigning a uh, uh, data type here which is an object type in which it is mentioning there is employee name there is a company name there is a salary and this is what the implicit object type typescript is applying and it is exactly similar to this one let me just quickly create it it's all case sensitive so there is an employee name of string there is a company name of string there is a salary with a number so we have an object something called employee which is of this object type in which we should compulsory have an employee name compulsory have a company name and a compulsory have a salary and this is the value inside which we are adding it's now all similar to this we have previously done this is your object this is your data type this is your value it is just in terms of the object it might look a little bit bigger but the syntax is remaining same so let's try to do in some bit different manner so okay here only the uh what we can say the <coughs> declaration part we are doing here and let's say a equals to 10 here this we can do of course right so let's try to do the same over here as well so i don't want to do this initialization here itself later i want to make it in this way sounds good it's also here only the declaration part and here then we are doing an initialization it is exactly similar to this now also let's try to play around it now instead of giving a number let's try to give a string here abc so what are the data type is present already we are not giving the same data over here in the initialization or maybe in the value assignment we are giving some different data type it is started complaining i need a number you are giving me a string so let's try to do the same thing over here so it is expecting a object let's try to give a normal string here so you can also see it is also started complaining i need employee name company name and the salary as an object but you are giving me 
just a string. So if you just read out these errors, it will be super simple and clear what errors we are getting here. So it is simply saying that I need a complete object in which I need the employee name and everything, these details. So let's try to play around and do some spell mistake here. Let's say I'm just making here employee name one. So again, here we are getting a compilation error here. It is saying that if you just hover the cursor, we need exactly the employee name. We are missing with here something called N1. And it is also very clearly mentioning here, this is what I am expecting. And uh, the one that we are sending here is this one. Correct. So uh, if you just read out the example, uh, the error message here, it, it will be super simple and clear what errors you are getting here. So, of course, I hope you have understood how the implicit and the explicit data types are already being assigned for the object type, how simple to write the objects in the TypeScript and how to access a specific values out of a particular object. Let me just comment out these examples so that when you will download this code, you will understand in more detail and let me simplify it in more good fashion here. Okay, fine. So. We'll see the more detailed objects, a nested object, and just playing around a few more variations with an object in the next lecture. Let's try to play around an object with more details now and with more adoptions. So we already have an object called employee here. So I just want to change the company name for this particular employee. So how will I be doing that? So employee dot company name it's abc i want to make it x y z yes of course i can change that by access by using the object name and then a particular property name inside that we can do so uh but i want to restrict these values not to be changed so what i can do here let's say the employee name i want once it's initialized it should not be changed so we can make it read only and now if i just try to change employee dot name from Naveen to Naveen R here. So it's not allowing me. It's simply saying that it's a read-only field. You can't change it. So we can make some read-only fields inside our object. Okay, fine. Let's try to understand the next option. That's an optional one. So uh, we want to give information for this particular salary, for example. So salary we have provided. So if I'm not giving the salary information, the object will immediately start complaining. So salary is a compulsory field. You can't skip it and all those. So if I just make a question mark here, so it will solve my problem. So it's my choice now. I either I can give the salary information or I can't, I, 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 I can leave it. So this question mark is making it as an optional one. So I can also remove this salary here now. Let's try to understand one more interesting thing that is the nested object. So where we can or write an object inside an object. So I'll just try removing this particular information now over here so just to make this code simple. Okay. So I want to include the address information for the employee. So when it comes to the address, there will be city, there will be country, there will be an address, a few things will be there. So of course it can't fix in a one line. We need again one more object to store the address information so how we'll do that so i'm mentioning here address again as an object inside that i want a city and the city is for example mumbai again inside which area so bkc again which country Getting. So we are mentioning an object inside another object. This is what a nested object. And if you now closely look at the data type, the object type that is implicitly being assigned by the TypeScript here by hovering the cursor on the employee object, you can see how the data type is getting created. It's super simple. It's an employee string company name, string address, and it's giving the ACT area as a country, the object inside an object. So hope it's clear now how to create an object inside an object. And we have also seen the read only part and we have also seen the optional part. Now in the next lecture, we'll also see how we can create a function inside an object for certain functionalities.
We have seen till now how to create an object and how to make it nested as well and few more functionalities. Now let's try to build a functionality inside an object where an object can perform certain uh, operations we can say because right now our object is just holding the data we can say. So how we can create a function inside that which can perform certain operation. So let's say I want to create a function over here. I want to create a method inside this particular object. Uh, something called a display and when I call it, it should uh, it should uh, elaborate me what exactly this object is all, all about. Let's consider it's an employee object. So it's holding a name, company name and address. So it's also going to have a display function here, which will elaborate us about this particular employee. So the job of that particular function is to elaborate the employee. So let's quickly create that. It's similar like uh, I'm going to create a display here, but now it's not as a uh, uh, what the normal we are using we are using this display as a function here so how we could do that so generally we mention it something like a string or a number whatever it could be we mentioned and we gave some data to it right so now i'm going to mention here it's not a normal one it's a function it's a function which don't accept any input and it's a body of that function. You can clearly observe there is no syntax that is coming. This is, we have very clearly mentioned the name of the function. And this is a function which don't accept any parameters. And this is the body of that function. This function not even written anything. And here, I'm just going to console log as hi from display. Just to confirm, we are able to call that. And now if I want to call this particular display functionality, I just need to say employee, I want to call your display function. Perfect. Let's see the outcome. Yes. Hi from the display. So now let's try to play around and uh, this particular function. And uh, we are going, we want to create the function in such a way that it should elaborate the employee. What's the name of the employee, where he works and from which particular country he is. We want to elaborate that. So, of course, in this particular function, we should have an access for these data. And that, of course, we are inside the same object. So, we can make use of this keyword that you might have seen in any other scripting language or the programming language. So, I'm going to mention, uh, hi, my name is, okay, so the name we are going to take in this way, this dot employee name what is this this it is indicating this particular object so i'm going to take out the name here so let's try to compile and see yes it's showing hi my name is navi and we want to print more information so we also want to say like okay fine your name is navi and uh, i work at the company name And I'm from address dot country. So let's quickly understand how we exactly we are just uh, writing a simple uh, uh, script here. So where we are just saying hi, my name is this dot employee name. Where we are want to get this particular name. Then we are also getting the employee uh, company name here and we are also trying to get this particular country here. And now let's try to see the output. So hi, my name is Naveen. I work at ABC and I am from India. So this is how we are writing a function which is describing this particular employee. So with this we understood we can write the uh, functions inside an object to perform certain operations. Hope it's clear. I'm going to attach the same code inside the resources from where you can download if you stuck somewhere and complete this assignment. Creating an array is super simple with a TypeScript. Let's try to create a simple array here. So I'll just say numbers and uh, I just want to say here one, two, three, four. Let's apply the preview. So here is the array we are creating. This is an array of an integer. Right now, the type that is being assigned for this particular number variable is implicit or the explicit by the compiler that you should be getting now. 
it's an implicit one because we are not explicitly mentioning if you just hover your cursor here you can understand the typescript is automatically selecting number of array here and even we can also mention in this way perfect okay sure let's try to quickly console it so that we can perform a set of operations on this yes we are able to get an array which is of length four here uh whenever we are creating an array here so in typescript array is a special type in all uh, it, it it treats it something like an object and it also have some certain inbuilt functionalities on that like we can add some data to that we can remove some data we can find a particular data we can travel on that particular array so many things are available uh and you can also make it something like a read only or we can say and other fields let's say for example uh i want to include here one more number in this and i'll say push five so let's see the outcome yes we are able to get that five so once you have created an array let's say you don't want to change it so what you need to make it you just need to make it add to read only so if you do that read only uh it's giving me an error here let's confirm what i'm missing here uh Okay, let me figure out what I can do with the read only. I guess something I'm missing or maybe the read only is not supportable in the TypeScript version that I'm using it. We'll try to go with that in a moment. Let's also try to explore the other functionalities with number uh, with array object TypeScript providing. So if you just click on dot here, it is also giving us concat and the copy within after that filter and many more functionalities. So we'll try applying few of the functionalities here for example, I want to filter all the numbers out of it which are greater than 2. So, how we'll do that? So, let updated numbers array and here I'll say numbers, I want to apply a filter on you. So, on each and every number, on each and every number, if this number is greater than 2, I want to filter it. That's it. So now what we should get inside this particular updated numbers, three and four. So if you just console it, let's see the output, three and four. So these are the inbuilt functions that Java, uh, the TypeScript is providing you. Apart from this, there are many others as well. This is just for the uh, filter one. Let's try to apply others as well. Let updated numbers, so what are the numbers we are having? Let's say we I want to get a square of all these numbers and I want to have an updated array out of it. So I can apply a map function over here that is similar to many other programming languages. So for each and every number, I want to multiply it with the same number here. And I want to console this updated number two now. Let's see the outcome. Getting it the square of each and every number 1, 2 square 4, 3 square 9 and 4 square 16. So the map is just modifying the values present in the array. The filter is giving you the filtered one. So like this, there are many other operations that you can perform with the inbuilt functionalities. And even if you want to travel over this particular array, it is simplified with the TypeScript. Let's say I just want to travel on these numbers and just want to print these numbers in a simple fashion. So let me just console it <coughs> with uh, a quick for here. So it's giving me different syntaxes for for each and normal for and everything. The general traditional one, I'll start first of all. So we have the traditional one here for i equals to zero. And then i is less than, I'll say four, correct? Okay, so i plus plus, I'll just console the number which is present at ith position. So let's see the outcome. One, two, three, four. Now let's try to understand if we are trying to access anything beyond the limit. So let's say I'm trying to access the fifth element as well. So in this case, what will happen? We have seen something in other programming language like C, C++ or Java, it could be, it shows a runtime error like you're going beyond the allocated memory or the beyond the allocated area. Let's see in JavaScript what will happen. So I'll just pause for a minute. You can just explore on it what will happen. 
perfect so let's try to see yes we are getting an id file so it's a javascript uh, at the end the convert uh, output of the typescript so as we have seen it uh, it is not giving you any error or something it is just saying you that it's an undefined that uh, that value i don't have if that you are trying to access so we are to guide, trying to access the fifth element which is not present here it's saying that it's an undefined i don't know what's the value present over there it's not giving you any error over here and if you want to make this particular compilation and this behavior more strict so we can work around the ts config file to have this compilation in a more strict fashion so when we are trying to access any particular memory area which is not available so there might be some advanced configuration available in the ts config which will help you to change this compilation behavior perfect so this is one more option to loop let's try to explore other option there is one more option something called as for each for each is much simplified as compared to the traditional one where i can just mention numbers i want to apply a for each on top of you and for each and every element this element is a number this element is a number so what you want to do you just want to console it right let's do that apply the print here it will give you exactly similar output the advantage of this particular for each is that you don't need to be much worried about what's the starting index what's an ending index and everything and have the memory related issues we are going beyond the located memory and all these things so there are many other uh, uh formation for this particular for, for for each and everything that you can use it for the travel cell on your array so feel free to explore that and we are going to see a few more advanced options with the arrays in the next lecture let's start with the missing one in the last lecture so we were having trouble writing a read only uh, here and uh, let me just rewrite it so what mistake we uh, we were doing last time so i was adding here read only for this particular variable here but we should add the read only here for our data type so now it's not only the number array it's the read only number array this array you can't modify so let's try to push a value into this so you can also observe it's not even allowing me to use the push function here and if i just try to push a value over here it will not allow me if i remove this it will allow me so hope you understood how the read only will work with respect to the array it's time to look into the more advanced things and using the objects with an array so that we can make use of the arrays and object in a more complex fashion so i'll just remove all of this code uh, let me just create a sample object that we have created the last time and I'll just add very simple properties here for this object. I'll add a salary here for say 1000. Okay, fine. This is my first object, let's say, and I want to create one more employee. Okay, no problem. I'll create one more. This time I'll keep the name Pravin here and the salary is let's say 1500. So I want to create the 100 employees. It means I want to create the 100 objects. Will it be correct to do in this way? Employee 1, 2, 3. No, it's not a correct way. Of course, we need to use the arrays for that. So how we generally create an array? Let's revise the syntax part. So this is the way you create an array here, right? So of course, when I want to create an array for these employees, how I'll be doing that. So I'll say list of employee. Why I'm giving you here this and small example so that you can compare how this previously we have done and the similar thing we are implementing for an op array of object here. So list of employee here. And now I want an array. It is exactly similar. You can just see it's an array. It's an array. Now here, if it was just a number, now here i want to give the objects here so i just want to give this object here comma again one more object over here that's it i'll just remove the above one so i hope you are able to compare the simple one with the more complex one here let me just remove this simple one and a console log for list of employees and let's confirm in the browser Yes, I'm getting an array and both objects are very well visible inside my array. 
let's try to quickly apply some operations and try to get out the names out of this array. So I want a list of uh, only the names of the employees, a simple string of array I can say. So which function will be useful, either the map or the filter? Yes, of course the map here use, will be useful. So let's say I want list of employee names here and the data type for this will be string array. So on this list of employee, I want to apply a map on each and every object. I want to get the employee name out of it. So finally, it will give me the list of employee name in an array of string format. Let's quickly try to console it. Here we go. Now, I also want to filter out all the employees who are having the salary more than 1200. So, one is having the 1000 uh, uh, and one more is having the 1500. So, I want to filter out all the people who are having more than 1200. So, I want to apply a filter function here on top of my array. So, I'll say <coughs> uh, list of employee. I'll just give the name of the array as updated here. List of employee dot filter. On each and every object, I want to apply the condition. What should be the condition? The object, what is the salary is present inside that particular object if this salary is more than 1200 rupees? So I want to apply a filter there and now i should only get the people who are having the salary more than 1200 only that uh, objects i'll be getting inside this updated array here let's see the outcome so i'm just getting an array which is having a single value inside it single object inside it and the object is this one the employees who, who is having the 1500 salary let's try to also add one more employee here With seventeen hundred, so right now I I I I, sh I should get the two uh, employees inside this particular filter array. Yes, we are getting it. Right. So this is the way we can uh, combine the objects with the arrays and create the more complex scenarios. Okay, fine. So there is one more option that I would like to introduce with this uh, in arrays. That is the destructuring that we are going to see in the next lecture. What is array destructuring? So for that, let's understand with a quick example here. So generally we mention uh, array in this way. Okay, so this is array which is holding just two numbers. That's absolutely fine. Let's console it. Yeah, perfect. But now if we want to get these array values inside some separate uh, variables, if there is a need such kind of uh, that so the destructuring will help you so instead of just writing here the array something like this you can mention n1 comma n2 what is this n1 it is trying to hold the value 1 what is n2 it is trying to hold the value of 2 and now you can use n1 and the n2 as a numbers directly so let me just console n1 and the n2 here That's it. You can also combine with uh, some other data types. Let's say I'm giving here the names and your the person one. I can make it person two. Just try to console. So it makes sense in this case because we want to get it in separately with different uh, uh, variables, the names. Fine, sure. There are other ways also to uh, uh, define the array. This is something a shorthand way to define an array. Uh, let me just introduce you one more. So generally we define an array in this way, right? You can also make it instead of this. Let me just comment it out so that you can compare it later. I can say new array. This is with a constructor. Of course, it's also creating an array object here in the previous case also, but that in background, the TypeScript is doing for you. 
but uh, and this is what at the end the TypeScript will do in background. And right now this is you are doing. So this is just a shorthand way for our simplification, but in background these things will happen. So this array is created with a constructor. So hope it's pretty clear. We have seen two things here: the array destructuring and the creating an array with a constructor. Next, we'll try to understand the union types. So let's try with a quick example here. So I would just want to store a number here in a variable. So the syntax for that is like uh, we have to compulsory mention like it's a number and it can only store a number here. But what if either I can store here a number or a string? I want to keep both as an optional. Both are the possibilities. So what I can do here, I can just apply a union operator and I can say a string. It means the data type is either the number or string. It can be anything. So if I'm just mentioning here number 10, no problem. Even though if I'm mentioning a string here, no problem. Both are allowed because the data type we have mentioned with the union. So how exactly it will be useful and what will be its benefits? Let's say uh, try to create a function here with the name display and uh, the parameter we are not sure either what uh, data type we are going to get either string or integer or wait, anything it could be array anything it could be. So let's say initially I'm just giving a string here and I just want to console here this param. So the, the, the role of this particular function that we created is such a way that whatever the input we are giving, it will just console it on the screen. So let's call this function display and give a parameter ABC. So let's see the outcome now. Okay, fine. We are able to see the output. Uh, let's see the same function now we would like to call with an integer. Will it be possible? No, because it's compulsory accept a string. So if I want to call with a number input here, it will, it's not possible. If I want to do that, I need to apply a union operator here and mention with num string, it also accepts a number. So now both are allowed and both will work very correctly. Fine. Next, we can also make it more complicated. Let's say we can give an array here. We can give uh, anything object also. Many more other combinations we can put. Let's say I also want to give in this case uh, true and false here. Uh, so right now it's not allowing me because it's saying that either the string or number is only allowed. So if I want to make it a boolean also supportable, I need to make it this way. So this is how the union Type will help you to combine the different types together and create a large number of possibilities. So here is a quick question I would like to ask you people now. Uh, let's say I'm passing a string. It's perfectly okay. So along with this particular console, I also want to console the length of this parameter. Will it be possible here? No. Why? Because the length is only applicable when there is a string. But here, apart from string, there is a number, there is a boolean also. So if I remove this, now it will allow me to have the length. I guess I have done some mistake here. Let me just confirm. Yeah, length. But when I'm making it as a number, immediately it is started complaining me length is not an allowed, not an allowed property over a number because it's not only string, it's also a number here. So uh how to get rid out of this particular issues and everything so you can write again manual validation for which data type we are having and forcefully converting that and then we can use these function with these are the few restrictions will come into picture when we are going to use the union types uh here so hope you understood how the union types will work so enums is a a uh, specialized class we can say which define a set of constants uh, in that and let's see how it will be useful with a quick example here so let me just create a quick enum here enum and uh, the name of the enum i want to give suppose log level okay and what are the logs i want to put into that for example the log is regarding an error 
the log is regarding just an information or it's just a warning we can say okay so we are creating a log of three different types here that is error info and the warning so these are just three constants we are creating because we are going to write application which is going to display the different logs and what type of uh, log it is what's the level of it it's an error it's an information or it's a warning so we will use this enum to write this particular logic here uh, i'm going to quickly write a function here name of the function will be display log very first thing what's the type of this particular log like uh, what's the level of this so log level will be my variable and the data type for this will be this enum so the log level must be given from this enum itself the second parameter for this i'll give the message what's the message for this particular log and this will be of type string perfect sure so let me just do a quick console here and uh, with console firstly i'll display the let me just say if okay uh, we, 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 we will we'll just complete the execution first display log the first parameter should be the log level this is of type info for example uh, all good let's try to see the output yes it's giving an all good so this is my first parameter this is my second parameter so the log level we have given as info and we are just printing the message here but here let's say i want to apply some conditions what is that if the log level is equals to the error so what i'm supposed to do before this particular message i'm going to say error and then i'll print my message again i'll do the same thing for the second one if it's an info the log type i'll give as info and for the last also it's a warning okay sounds good so for each different types of log it is prefixing with some uh, label here it's an error it's an info or it's a warning and then it's printing a message so let's try to call this multiple times so let's say this time we are calling it for an error uh, array index issue log and here it's a warning all code part not a word this sample logs i want to print three different logs it's a good log it's a uh, error related log and it's a warning related log so if i just go to the output here so in front of each and every log very perfectly i'm able to see it's an information log it's an error log it's a warning log here so it will be helpful to communicate the different constants very easily with the use of these enums here there are many use of enums as well and different uh, variations of the enums also we can use with string numeric also we can combine with the uh, string and numeric and all together combine to have a more complex functionality as well let's try to investigate the enums in more detail what exactly the values it contains in background so let's say this is a log level we have created so I just want to randomly console and i'll just comment out the previous consoles here and uh, i want to see what exactly the value of this particular error when i'm consoling it it's giving me zero interesting let's try to see for others as well zero one two so what we understood with this so by default in background it is storing the numbers when we are saying it as a constant zero one two so with this sequence and even if you hover your cursor here it is giving you zero one two so a quick question over here so if i just make it six 
10 15 and i'll just uncomment these functionalities here is the behavior or the output of this particular program will change or it will work exactly the similar fashion that previously worked in the last lecture i'll just give you a minute to think on it let's see the output all good info error index issue and all code path not covered the warning it's working exactly similar so it doesn't matter what exactly the constants are given over here zero or it could be one or it could be two whatever it could be we are giving the constants here by whenever we are using it we are just using these constants we are not using these values at all even you can see while passing also i'm passing the constant i'm passing the enum while receiving also i'm receiving the enum while comparing also i'm comparing the enum itself it doesn't matter what exactly the actual value inside that particular enum uh, there are other enums also like uh, which will be more useful and you can see in the practical usage like uh, uh, http status we can say in http status for example there will be bad request bad request for bad request i guess it's 400 and uh, after that there is something called as internal server error or internal server error there is something called 500 so th this will be useful when uh, when we want to use in this way because right now making it 0 10 or 15 for this error in for something maybe doesn't make sense but when you are using it practically it makes sense here and it will be useful because uh, it is also linked with other functionalities for example when we are saying bad request it is not just bad request we'll also need this particular 400 value to also communicate with other libraries and everything and uh, not only something like this we can just uh, assign an integer to this we can also assign a string so in a let's say directions i'll just say up so up then say down so hope you have understood now we can assign any constants values that we need as per our uh, logic so rest all everything will be similar and uh, with this we have completed the enums we have seen enums with integer enums with uh, giving the manual integer values to it giving the string values to it uh, using it practically with display log functions here and many more Let's understand the declaration with let in more detail and what's the difference between let, var and the constant. So a variable declaration can be done with three, three different types in TypeScript here. So first one is var, then we can do with let and then constant. Everyone have its own usage. So initially, let me just try with a uh, var here. So var a equals to 10. Let me just give a quick console okay i should get 10 here yes we are getting now let's say if i'm adding some business logic here if it's uh true i'm just trying to create a block here so that we can uh write some more code here and i'm going to have some separate business logic here uh for some certain operation and here for uh, writing this particular business logic here i need to create few more variables where again i am creating the variable a and making it level so i'm creating a separate variable a here and trying to use it in the logic which is inside this particular block but now let's understand either it will create a new variable or it will change my existing so what will happen i'll just pause for a minute let's think on it and ready with your answers fine so let's see how it will work yes it's changing it's uh changing the original variable we can say so the problem over he here is we need a separate business logic here to perform some certain operation we need to use the variables those variables might be already used above here we can use i uh, generally for for loop we use i j k something like that right so we can compulsory keep reusing it but due to this varior it is changing the variables which are present outside of my business logic so it's unwantedly hampering my application 
it should not change this particular 10 and it is changing that 10 that's the reason this console we are getting here as something called 11 years so our original value is getting changed which is outside of our business logic so if you don't want to hamper outside of your business logic if you want to keep the variables limited to the scope that you are defining so what you can do you can just say it as let keyword so this particular let keyword is saying that i'm going to create a local scoped variable so this particular variable a with the value 11 is separately created and is just available within this block itself i'm not going to change any value which is outside of my scope so let's see the output now yeah so it's not hampering the original value here okay so interestingly we'll also try to create one more the b equals to 20 here and i'll just try to access this b over here can i access the variable b i'll just pause for a minute and wait for your answers okay so let's try to do it i'm immediately started getting an error what it's saying that let's try to read cannot find the name b of course because it's a local variable which is limited to this scope so of course it can't find this particular variable b here so i hope you understand how exactly the let works one more that is the const here uh constant which is with the name itself is suggest if it's a constant c equals to let's say 25 once it is initialized we cannot change its value that is what it's trying to say it's a constant we can't change it so hope you understood the var the const and importantly the let keyword in this particular lecture let's try to understand the let in more detail with few more advanced examples so let me just create a variable a equals to 10 with the let declaration here and uh, i'll just create a dummy function here so that i can just make a quick call and here let me just make it a equals to 11 I'll just console it a be very careful here we are just creating a function we are not calling it at all till now so what should be the outcome it's 10 okay so now here uh let me just call this function one so now the execution of line number six is happening it's creating a separate local scope variable which is not going to affect any way my global variable so of course the output the outcome here should be 10 itself okay super perfect if i just remove this what will happen now there is no variable declared inside a local function here with the variable a it will try to find the nearest available uh, variable with the name a here so which is the nearest available local variable a here there is no local available so it's try to go up above that so there is a one variable globally available so it's try to use this variable and it's trying to change the value of 10 to 11 so now the value of this a variable will be changed to 11 okay super perfect so let me create one more scope here to understand this in bit more detail and here if i again saying a equals to 12 anything gonna change here no because this a is having its own scope this a is having its own scope that's all now interestingly let's try to do one thing here if i do a console of this a here what will be the output let's think on it for a minute okay let's see the output here it's simply 10 let's understand the function is getting called it is creating its own variable a inside which it is storing 11 its own variable it's not touching our global when we are coming here line number nine you don't have any declaration with a so it's trying to find the nearest available declaration for a which is the nearest available declaration line number six so it's using this variable here so this 11 is getting changed to 12 at line number 9 and it is not affecting any way at the line number 3 declaration which is present for A. And that's the reason our original value is untouched for the variable A over here. And if you want to see this A is getting changed, if I just console here A, so you can just observe this as line number 12. 
so line number 12 here it is line number 12 we are getting the 12 here perfect okay so this is all about in detail for the let keyword let's also try understanding the practical usage for the let keyword with some for looping statement and how it is beneficial while writing the for loops so i'll just comment this so that it will be helpful for you uh let me write a quick uh index here index equals to five let's say i'm perform uh, uh, index equals to five let's say i'm performing a few of the operations here for my own purpose and i'm using it after that after performing some more operations here i want to create a loop statement for and inside this for again i want to use an index of course i'll use an index with name only so i'm not trying to use this index but i want to use my own index variable so that i can do a looping on something so i'll say index equals to zero and this index should less than equals to four i plus plus okay i'll just declare it with a var here okay uh okay let me just create with a var only here and uh, this index let me just quickly repair this thing okay and console this index what is happening here we are having a global variable with the name index with the value 5 again the same global variable we are trying to change here this is not a new declaration is happening here because we know already it only happens with the let so we are trying to use the same global variable and we are making the value equal to zero for that particular index here then we are making it plus 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 up to four it will go then it will go five and then it will come out of this particular for loop i'll just make it up to uh three here so that we can understand the values more quickly so let's see what's the console is coming so we are getting 0 1 2 3 that's perfect 0 then plus 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 is happening up to 3 and we're getting at last 3 here and when it's coming to the 4 it's going out of the loop now here i just want to console and see what is the value present inside this index so can you guess i'll just wait for a minute what will be the value over here at line number 24 for the index let's see the output line number 24 the value is 4 here so we are writing a for statement but it is changing our index which is present globally our variable which is present globally so this should not happen ideally because generally we will keep writing many for loops to have some iterations and other algorithms running and everything so our for loop these indexing variables we don't want to be affected and want to change our other variables which are present outside of our for loop this index equal to zero less than equals to three everything we are writing for the functionality purpose of this for loop so this is changing the variables which are present outside of this for loop that's not a correct one so to deal with these problems and everything the javascript and the typescript came with a new thing for the declaration that is what the let we have used till now so when i'm saying let index i equals to zero it's creating a new index variable only limited for this particular for loop itself it's not going to affect anyway this particular index so if i just uh, print the output now i should get zero one two three and after that at line number 24 i should get my five as it is original getting it so our original value of 5 is unaffected with this so that's the benefit of the late keyword which keep you very much limited to the scope that you have defined or declare that variable let's try to discuss about the tuples now so what is tuples tuples is tuples is a similar to the arrays we can say in the typescript but uh, we can have a different data types inside our array with tuples and we can also restrict the length of the array we can say with the tuples of course it's have some pros and cons we'll discuss with few examples here let me just create a sample tuple here let's say t is 2 and if i just say 1 comma 2 it's a normal array of integer and if i say 1 comma a b c so it's a tuple now because it's an array with different data types present in that so it's becoming a tuple now 
and if you just hover your cursor over the t here you can just understand it's an array of either the string or the number it means it is saying that this array can consist of its string and the number both of it mixed i can also make it something like this and now if you can check so this is an array it's a tuple which can have a string number and boolean as an elements inside of it but what's the use out of it so let's try to uh, uh, understand with a quick example so i'm just creating a function called display here and i want to receive the parameters in pairs here i want to receive a pair parameter here and uh, this particular parameters i want to receive the first one i want to receive as a string and the second i want to receive as a number and uh, here i just want to console this pair zeroth value and this pair the first value let's try to display this okay so uh i'll give the parameters here in tuple so i'll just give the name here and then i'll also give the second parameter which is a number compulsory that i need to give getting here so here it is accepting a tuple as a parameter so in which only two uh, elements are allowed inside this tuple and the first one should be compulsory string and the second one should be a compulsory number if by mistakenly the second one i'm making as a string here it will not accept so this way if you want to restrict any particular uh, array or any particular input to be a uh, very limited with number of elements or with certain data types with something kind of an array kind of thing so you can use the tuples here so let me just make it normal here and it will allow you so this is how the tuple works with tuples there are a few other things let's say for example uh in this tuple let's say pair of one so what is this pair of one this number right this is the first index so uh that's correct let me go to the zero one it's a string can i make it something called as length here yes of course i can do and i can also print the length of it let me just quickly print the length here let's see the outcome we should get a length 5 yes because we are passing this uh value here and it's 1 2 3 4 5 that's perfectly fine but as soon as i make it 1 here i should start getting an error here very correct because the pair of 1 it means this particular value element is do it's not a string so it can't have a length as a parameter here and it is also giving you very clearly so uh, this is the way we can use the tuples in a more good fashion and of course in tuples we can also add more values which is a bit uh, unexpected behavior with the tuples but sometimes it will be useful i can also push other values here inside my tuple so this also you can do so although we are restricting uh, to a certain inputs here with tuples only two inputs with specific data days but later also we can push more values uh, values into it so this is we, we cannot say the disadvantage of course we are making use of the tuple to restrict the parameters of this function so it's giving us a certain advantage but there are some other benefits also when we are pushing some things in tuples uh, that might uh, we can see in the advanced scripting when we'll try Let's try to understand the restructuring with tuples. So we have seen how the tuples we are using to send the inputs to a particular function. But uh, of course, when we are sending these particular inputs over here inside this function, if I want to uh, print the name of the employee or maybe this is an ID, I need to use that indexing here. So if I just want to print the name here, so I need to mention the pair of zero and then if i want to print an id i need to make it one let's see the outcome once yes this is an id and this uh, name and id but this is a bit uh, uh not looking a good to have the name here and the id here of course it's good to pass but uh, for the working of this particular function uh having the values like this in array for name and id is not looking that much convenient so if i want to more simplify this i can do the destructuring over here so instead of ex expecting these values inside an array 
inside a pair array, we can destructure it while receiving itself. So how? So I can see here, the first parameter that I'll receive inside my tuple is going to be my employee name. And the second parameter that I'm going to receive inside this tuple is going to be employee ID. So now I can use this employee name and employee ID simply like a function arguments, function parameters. That's it. So now I can uh, freely use the employee name and ID simply like a local variables or maybe function parameters. It will help me to design this particular function in a more bit good way instead of using that pair zero of one or one. What is a license? So a license is nothing but a custom name given by you for uh, any data type or maybe, maybe any complex data type or maybe any simple data type or just a custom name you're giving. Let's start with a quick example. Uh, let's say I'm giving i, id equals to, I'm giving 10. Okay. So we know it's a number, right? Okay. If we have the cursor here or if we can just make any number, it's a number. But when I'm saying it's an ID, so let's say, for example, it's an employee ID. So instead of just mentioning number here, if you want to be more specific, it's an employee ID of. So this ID is of type employee ID. I'm not saying it's of type number. I'm saying it's of type employee ID. So I can create my own custom type for that. So for that, I need to mention type. And here I need to mention EMP ID employee So my employee ID is a type now, which is equivalent to a number. So either I can write a number here or I can mention this ID is of type employee ID. So this is my allies for a number. Sounds good. So this is my ID one. Again, I want to create one more ID. So which is of type employee ID. And now I'll keep the ID right here. So this is uh, the simple example. Let's try to understand with a more complex example with an object here. I'll just comment out this code. Uh, we want to create a type for employee. So we are creating an employee type. And if we are creating a uh, data type called employee, so it should have an employee name and ID inside of it. So I'm mentioning EMP name should be of type string. Then it should also have EMP ID of type number. If you just compare this line with this lines, it's super simple. This is my new data type name. This is my new allies. This is my new data type, new allies. And previously we were using the data type called number. And here, this is an object data type, which is very clearly defining like this object data type is having an employee name and employee ID. If I just want to create a new object now, let's say EMP one. So I can mention here, this employee one is of type, sorry is of type employed so when i'm doing that immediately it started saying that so if you are saying that please make sure to add employee name and employee ID because when you are saying emp1 is of type employee data type so you must include employee name and the employee id in it so let's do that employee name emp id Perfect. So this is how we are creating a type for a more complex scenario uh, of something like an object kind of thing here. And we are also have one more option here to do with types. That is something with a uh, union, we can say how it will work. Again, let me just comment out this thing for you. And if you remember, previously we have created some function called display. So display it's a function it accepts a parameter and it can accept a string or a number or a boolean and the job of this particular function is to just 
console whatever the value we have given so let's try to call this function a couple of times display one two three perfect it will work then display a string this will also work and display a boolean value this should also work let's see the output okay so now here we are saying display so we are allowing to display a string a number or a boolean but we are complicating this particular input data type here so why can't we create a separate type allies for this yes we can create so what i will do here i'll say type input so the input can be or can be of string number or boolean so i'll say my input can be of type string or number or boolean and from now onwards whenever i need any input which is similar to this instead of writing this all big things i can just remove it and say input so input means you can pass string number or boolean and it will work exactly the similar way that was working previously sounds good sure so uh, we'll see uh, we'll see the next uh, options and the next features in the typescript which is uh, uh, more and more uh, similar to this uh, but remember one thing here whenever you are using these uh, types don't get confused with interfaces and the types it might look a bit similar but we have a separate module for the interfaces which will give you a clear differentiation of course it's a bit similar but there are some differences that we'll see in a separate module but for now don't confuse with interfaces and the types see something interesting called literals here so what exactly we mean by literals so literals is something like we can say just a value and if you want to keep that value fixed and uh, let us want to just check it so we just call it as a literal for example it's a number literal or a string literal let's quickly try to understand with an example here so i'm just trying to create a variable here for http method so what is this http method so if you are from a backend uh, uh backend coding background or something you might be knowing get post put all these methods and everything so there is something uh, variable called http methods and here the method can be get or uh, it can be post or put so these are the possibilities so that we know right sure so what i'm going to do here so if i'm writing a get method here that's perfectly okay no problem but people can do a spelling mistake here and can make it like this people can make a spelling mistake and make it like this okay so if you want to compulsory fix some literals here what could be the literal valued allowed here for this particular variable so you can define the literal data types how it will work so here generally we mention it as a string so instead of mentioning as a string this http method is not only a string it must be a get or it must be a post or it must be a put this is exactly similar to the one we have written previously let me comment out the previous one so this is my variable name and this is my data type so here the data type is saying that there are three options i have given you three literals options i have given you and you can use any out of any one out of it to fill up the value inside this particular variable so i'm using the get one and here it was a string and here it is a union and it's giving a three different literal option as a data type now if i do a small spelling mistake here immediately it start complaining me because the allowed values are only these three literals perfect okay so let's try to quickly uh, understand this with an example so let me create a function here called function handle the request let's say we are calling some backend rest apis from our front end application so this is my url which i'll just call something like a string now for now and what's a method and this method should be merged out of this particular three and here I'll say calling 
let me just put inside the bucket and calling the URL and I'll also try to write using what method we are calling this okay and a request so let's say I want to call http slash dot com using a so it's giving me three different options. I can call google.com with get, post, and put. I want to call with a get. Again, I want to call Google with a post. Again, if I do any spelling mistake here, it will not allow me because only these three values are allowed for this second parameter. Let's see the outcome. Getting. So in this way, if you want to restrict the values that you're putting into any particular variable or the input parameter, so you can do that with literals and it will really help in real-time application. Also, let's also quickly try to understand one more real-time application. You might have seen the compare function before this many times, which will give you the output zero, minus one or plus one, zero when both are equal. Uh, it will give you plus one when the first string is greater than second and minus one when the second string is the bigger than the first one. So let's try to create the similar function over here. Compare. I'll just compare S1 string and S2. And right now I'll, I'll just say number as an output for this. And here I'll just say return if s1 equals to equals to s2 i would like to return zero because both are equal if it is if that is not the case or to make it more simple i'll also write with if else statement instead of ternary operator here so i want to return zero else I want to compare s1 is bigger than s2 if that is the case then i should return one if that is not the case i would like to return zero and this is what exactly similar we can do with the ternary as well let's try to do it ternary so the people who are comfortable with the ternary operator can also proceed with that just a shorthand nothing else so this is a true statement now let's come back to the false statement and compare s1 is greater than s2 so in that case i want to return one or else i want to return minus one so both are acceptable so for now i'll just using the below one and commenting the above one okay so console i'm giving two parameters so i'll give abc and abc what should be the output it should give us zero. ABC, ABC, what's going wrong here? Oh, sorry. Uh, we need to call. I just did a console here. Compare ABC and ABC. We are not. Oh, my mistake. So the compare is returning some output to us, right? So we must console it. So we are calling a compare and giving two parameters is performing some certain operation and giving us some number as an output for this particular operation. So we should get zero here. Yes, because both are equal. So we are getting zero. Let's try to make the second string as a bigger one now. We are getting minus one because the second string is bigger as compared to the alpha uh, alphanumeric comparison. It's a second is the bigger one. So we are getting this minus one. And let's try to make the first one as a bigger one now. We are getting plus one. If you clearly observe, the output of this particular function is always fixed. It is either zero, one, or minus one. So giving here the written type as number doesn't make sense. It's not correct to give it as a number. So instead of number, what I can say here, I can say it will give you zero or one or minus one so this is again the literal types we are using over here we can say 
so this will also help us in upcoming comparison let's say for example uh you're doing a quick comparison here if let results equals to and if you just hover your cursor over here at the results you can see it is saying that it can only have a value of 0 1 and the minus 1 so when you write large code uh, so it will help you and many libraries also if you found it will uh, uh, you can find these literal data types are used to restrict the values that they are putting in particular variables that you can see functions functions are the basic building blocks to make your code readable maintainable and uh, reuse your code that you're writing so let's try to understand how many types of different functions we can write how the inputs and output for the functions will work how the advanced parameters like default rest parameters and everything will work we're also going to see the arrow functions and the anonymous function the function without name and all this so let's try with a quick uh, examples here so the very first thing we'll start with function with a normal one which accepts some parameter and gives some written type so i'm just creating the very basic function here something called add and i'm going to expect two parameters here that is n1 and n2 and just perform an addition out of it and i'm going to return a number out of this so it's a return n1 plus n2 that's perfectly fine and let's quickly call it it might be very simple but it's needed to start the advanced topics with functions Oh, sorry. So I want to give two and three. So the output should be five. Yes. So we are getting the expected result here. Five. So this is with input and uh, with uh, uh, return data type we are giving. Let's say our function won't return anything and the console is happening here itself. Whatever the outcome is coming is happening here itself. So. Okay, so in that case, we don't need any input. So here, the in the uh, sorry, we don't need any output uh, from this particular function as a return type. So in that case, the return type for this function will be void. And if I just call this function here, it is not going to return me anything. It will just console here itself when we are calling it. So the console is happening at line number four here, and it's not returning anything to us that's perfect now let's try to understand few more advanced topics something called as optional parameter so with optional parameter um, let me rewrite the code like previous okay with optional parameter let's say i want to give one more parameter the third parameter here that is n3 and number of course i can make it like this and I, I i compulsory need to keep the third parameter over here so so we should get here five and six the output should be six we are getting but let's understand here now the third parameter is optional sometimes i can give and sometimes i uh, i i may leave it so for that what i can do here i can just apply a quick question mark here so with this question mark what we are informing this function parameter this is an optional parameter so as soon as I do that, I'm started getting an error here. It is saying that this particular parameter is an optional parameter. So you can't use it in an expression. It must be compulsory supplied. So what if we can do a quick adjustment here, we can say if N3 is given, use it or use the value zero. That's it. So here we are giving the one. So in this case, the zero will not be useful. So the total output will be two, three, one. It will be six. That's perfect. And even though if I'm not passing the third parameter, which is optional, and due to this, I'm not getting any syntax error as well. In this case, n3 is null or undefined, we can say. So in this case, zero will be used and we'll get the output five. Perfect. So for, we have understood the optional parameter. Let's also try to understand the default parameter. With default parameter, what will happen? Let's say the third parameter instead of giving it as an optional uh, i'll create a copy out of it so that uh, or i'll just comment it so that you will not miss the code when you download it so this particular n3 i'll not make it as an optional i'll give instead some default value something called as zero and in this case i not even need to 
write this additional code. So what is happening here? N1 and N2 are compulsory. The N3 is having its own default value. Even though if you are not giving a value for the N3, it will by default consider zero. And even though if you are giving it, it will accept and it will override its default value. So in this case, the output should be 15. Yes. And if we are not passing the third parameter, the output should be this 2135 and this will be considered zero. So it should be only five. Perfect. So in this way, we have seen how we can get a particular optional parameter and default parameter. There is one more something very interesting called rest parameters. So let's see how it works. Let's comment out this code again. So in this case, the requirement is we are going to create a function which is going to display the logs. But the logs which are coming from the user or maybe from any system can differ. It can be one, it can be two, it can be three, it can be eight, any number of uh, logs can come. So we cannot define the certain parameters. So it's a function and display logs. And here, let's say we are displaying a log of string that's perfect no problem and uh, let's first do it in a simple way we want to display logs and i want to give you the log so this is log one for example let's see the outcome it's perfect we are getting the log one but now we want to change the behavior of this function such a way that we can give multiple logs so what we can do we can make it log one we can make it log two and in the similar way in console also we can change it and here we will pass our log two let's see the output yes but let's say we again need three, four, and now we are not sure how many parameters will come, how many logs will come. So of course, we need some certain functionality to dynamically change the list of parameters that we are passing to this particular function for the display logs. So there we need to use the rest parameters, how it will work. So we need to add three dots, logs, and we also need to mention this will be of what type? It will be of type string and it's an array so this is your rest parameters for the function display logs now this particular log is a simple array so why can't we apply a quick for each on this and for this each and every log let's quickly print it so now in this case i'm passing the two logs so it's accepting as an array for this particular See the outcome. Perfect. This time, let's try to pass more. Three, four. Yes. So now I can pass any number of uh, parameters here. Now, one quick question to you. If I remove all this parameter, will it work or will it throw any error? I mean, I'm going to give the zero input on line number 19 for the function display logs. I'll just give you a minute to think on it. Let's try to do it. So very first thing I'm not getting the syntax error. Let's see in production if anything failing. No. Why it's not failing? Because it's considering it is an array and this array when it's a length of zero, this particular for each statement will not be executed. So no errors will come. So hope you have understood how the rest parameters will work and it will be useful in many production scenarios when you're going to create the complex applications. Let's understand the arrow function. So the arrow functions are such a way that they don't have any name and uh, it is something like that, like uh, dynamically created. You can see the arrow functions in many libraries and something in the inbuilt implementation. I'll just show you a, a quick sample implementation for this and we'll also uh, try a real-time application for that so that you can understand the arrow functions in more detail so let's uh, create a variable here which is holding a function that we are going to create as an arrow function and let's say call it's an add so i'm going to mention it in this way return 
n1 plus n2 and the parameters will be n1 number n2 number this is our function so now this is just a normal variable that we are assigning a function to it these are these are the two parameters for our function n1 and n2 this is the body of our function and the written type for this arrow function we should return here let's create an equivalent representation in normal function the traditional way so here is a name of our function let's quickly comment it to understand it better n1 as a number n2 the return type is number the return n1 plus n2 it's exactly similar this is your function name these are the parameter this is the return type and this is what your function is doing and it is returning something here so this is your function body right in the similar fashion in arrow function as well this is your function body as it is there is a slight difference in the function name arrow function don't have any particular function name so we are just creating an arrow function here this is an arrow function and then we are assigning it to a variable which is holding it i'm just randomly creating some different name because it's colliding here or maybe we'll comment it okay then the parameters are also exactly similar this is the way we mentioned the parameters and if you need to mention the written type of your function you need to mention the colon number now how to call this particular uh, arrow function which is stored in this particular add variable it's exactly similar the way you call this add then you give the necessary parameters n1 and n2 and here also you can observe it is giving you the option 1 comma 2 and give it and now it is going to return a number to me so let's quickly use a console let's see the outcome we should get the three so this is how we create an arrow function uh, so this is with return type you can remove this return type and uh, you can just console here itself so this is without written type and in this case this console is not needed it will still work in a similar way if you don't want to give any input to your function of course you can do that i'll just print high here no need to give any inputs let's create the equivalent representation over here this is our add function we don't need any inputs to it we don't need any inputs and we are not returning anything out of it so we'll also remove this or we can also make it void here or we can remove it and here we are just saying console i so this is an equal representation for the arrow function that we have created so this is the way we create the basic arrow functions now we'll see with a detailed example how it will be used in some production scenarios or to make some complicated logic work let me just undo this functionality so that it will be helpful for you when you will download the code i'm just commenting out all these functionalities so now i need to create a function i need to create a function which expect uh, which uh, which take as an input two variables and it also takes input what need to be performed on that two variables it means generally the logic will be written inside a function but now in this case the logic also we need to pass it so it means we are going to pass a function as a parameter so let's try to create that it's a function the name of this is take action and here we need for example two inputs n1 and n2 let's create first the basic one before going advance and uh, return n1 plus n2 i'm just performing an addition for now later we'll make it more complicated one two 
and as we are returning so let me just console as well perfect so now in this case always there is a hap there is an addition happening but let's say while you're calling this particular take action with data you also want to pass some function you also want to pass some logic that should happen on these variables so the logic also you want to pass as an input it means the function as a parameter so when you're passing function as a parameter so there you need arrow function so let's see how you can pass a function as a parameter very first thing to do that you need a third input over here so the third input says for example you're going the third input name will be a function for example and uh, the type of that i'm giving any here for now just the sake of understanding later i'll change it to the particular function parameters and everything so here the third parameter is function so i can pass a third parameter here now and before doing that i'll remove this console log Uh, okay i'll also remove this for now and here i'll try to pass the logic here so what is the logic i want to pass i want to pass a function here so i want to pass an addition function so how the addition function will be written in the arrow function so let add there will be two inputs to it right and one and two and then it will return or let's say we will console here itself and one plus n2 so this is our arrow function which is capable of expect, uh, accepting two parameters as an input and performing an addition on top of that so let's copy this and give it as a third parameter here what exactly we are doing we are just giving these third parameter called function that's it in this case we are getting an error here that because we are not returning any number here as a return type so just remove that so ideally what's happening here you're call, you're calling a take action function you're giving two parameters one and two super cool one and two after that you're also giving a parameter as a function here this is not going to execute here right away here itself so this particular function will go here i need to call function here now to make the execution happen for this so let's see the output now we are getting an a n so what could be the reason for that anyone can guess a quick i'll just wait for a minute okay so what we have said here we are giving you the function this function need two parameters and then it can give you the addition in a console so what you are doing here you are ex you are accepting that param uh, function here but while calling you are not giving the necessary parameters to it so give the necessary parameter n1 n2 so these parameters i am passing here let's save it and see three so let's see this time we want to take some different action so i want to again call take action on on this number this time i want to pass like three and five and this time i want to take some different action called into and let's see the output now i'm getting 15. so the same function is getting called but here you can see we are passing different different function at a different different call as per our requirement so this is function as a parameter we can say that we are passing in this case so hope it's very clear and of course instead of this any we can make it more uh, specific like how many inputs will come for this particular function and what output of this particular function will be but that's something like an advanced scenario that we will not cover in this particular module it will be much complicated so hope you understood and uh, we'll see the next scenarios in the upcoming lecture
let's try to understand the anonymous function in the similar example so that we can uh, give one more variation and alternative for the arrow function sometimes like uh, you need to use the anonymous functions and sometimes you need to use the arrow functions depends on the flexibility and the scenario which comes uh, many libraries use both in combination with each other as per the requirement so how to create the anonymous function i'll just uncomment this and uh, we'll see with an example so this we have already seen with a very good example this is an input and this is a body and if it, there is any uh, output for this function we'll mention here the return type so if i just want to convert this as an anonymous function i just need to write here as function and i need to remove this arrow here we go so this is our anonymous function we need to write a function keyword here the parameters then if there is any data written data type is there that we can write here in, in our case we are not writing here now and our function body so let's try to pass one arrow function here and one anonymous function over here in this case so we'll apply the multiplication function here so let's see the outcome first it should be 15 yes we have already passed as an arrow function so let's convert it as a anonymous function so it's a function arrow we need to remove that's it so again the outcome should be 15 that's it let's understand one more quick uh, 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 function uh, uh, constructor that is provided by the javascript in the upcoming new versions that's not a big use of it but it's better to just know for your understanding so here i would like to create let for example multiply a uh, a variable i'm creating and if i want to create a function so i need to say new function with a constructor and here i need to give the list of parameters that my function accepts n1 n2 and what exactly my function will do that i also need to write here so my function is going to return n1 into n2 it might look a bit strange but this is just to elaborate the by default there is a function constructor available we can create a function in this way as well of course this is not a very convenient way but this is one of the way available with the javascript that is supported by the type typescript so we are understanding it so let's try to call this multi function pass the parameter like 10 comma 4 it should be 40 let's see the outcome uh no what could be the reason any guesses yes so we are passing as a return we are not doing a console so let's do a quick console here we should be getting 40. so few things for just for the observation here we are not specifying the data type because it's a pure javascript then uh while uh, calling also if i'm giving a string here it is not giving me any errors because we are not specifying what data type this n1 and n2 are having so this is much behaving similar to the javascript so in this case what could be the outcome i'll just take a pause for a minute so that you can think on it okay so let's see the output it's again 40 okay it's a multiplication operation maybe it's getting uh, uh, considered as a string to integer when we are performing a multiplication let's try to perform an addition here it should be 104 okay so it doesn't matter what data we are passing and everything because it's not checking the data types and of course with that let's try to do some mistakes here with the written spelling or blah 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 something so again in compile time we are not getting any errors because this is not getting compiled checked with the type script because this is in the double quotes and this is not a direct execution at compile time can be identified so let's save this and see at runtime we should get some runtime error so of course we are getting some runtime error due to this so and we are done with maximum possibilities that a function can be called with different parameters with different written types arrow function optional parameters with that rest parameters and these all combined together will be used to build the great application and you can see in different libraries the different type of functions will be used that you have learned till now
let's understand the typecasting in the TypeScript. So why the typecasting is necessary? So typecasting is necessary when the TypeScript won't automatically convert the data type uh, and it does when there is no data loss. But if there are any chances of the data loss of the co for converting from one data type to the another data type, we have to explicitly do the typecasting. And uh, when we take the data from the user or when the data is coming from the internet, from API or maybe other different libraries or some other third party sources. So there we have to apply some typecasting so that we can convert that data to a specific format, to a specific data type to perform next operation so let's understand this with a small example i'll just create a function here uh, which displays the length of the input given by the user so let's consider this is an input that user is given and uh, we are just consoling the length of this input like this let's quickly call this display length and then let's say a b c okay so we should get an output three perfect but in this case now instead of this i'll pass a number one two three four five like this so in this case what is happening it is not allowing me a call. So I need to update the input to a union type. So the input can be of string or number. So when I'm doing that, I'm solving one problem that I can call with a string or a number. But with that, I'm also introducing one more problem. So this input can be of string or number. So I can't use the length because it's a number. So in, in that case, uh, we can't call the length on the number data type. So that's the reason it's not allowing us. So what we can do here, we can do a typecasting. So we can say this input should be considered as string. Super simple. So even though it's a string or number, it doesn't matter. It is helping us here to accept the different parameters of type input, string or the number. At the end, when we are uh, calculating the length of it, we are considering it as a string only. So when we are doing this, this particular input is converted to a string data type. And that's the reason it is allowing us to have the length calculation for that. So let's see the outcome now. We should get three and then five. So we are getting an undefined over here. And that's a valid reason. Why we are getting an undefined? We are passing a number here. We are passing a number. Of course, you are forcefully converting a number to a string, but you cannot calculate the length for that. So it's not a correct way to calculate the length in this way by a forceful conversion. So what we will do, we'll just say if the type of my input, if it's string, then only perform this length calculation otherwise otherwise mention sorry length calculation is possible for string only super simple let's see the outcome now yes so for integer we are getting this message and for the string we are getting very perfectly uh, the output so we are passing string or number it's getting uh, converted here as a string and we are calculating uh, the length out of that so here is a way like we should use the type casting sometimes we will lose some data when we do the type casting so you, we should be very much careful and generally it will be useful when you get the data from the rest api calls because it comes with the json then you might need to be converted to the array of object or some other objects and something so this typecasting is very helpful, but it's very risky because sometimes you may lose some data when doing this typecasting. So be very careful on this. Let's understand the typecasting with an example and uh, how uh, when you use it in a correct way, how beneficial it is. And when you use it in a wrong way, how you will lose the data or some inconsistencies will come. So. Uh, I want to get some value which is present on my HTML page here and I just want to create a text box here. 
so let's quickly do that so i just want to create an input here in my html the type of that i want to keep as text the id i want to keep input one that's it and the value inside this i just want to put a b c let's see my html it's visible yes it's visible and we're able to see that very perfect now this particular html element this particular html input element i want to access in my ts file yes of course we can do that so let input so document dot get element by id we want to get element by id and what's an id of my element input element input one so perfect so i'm getting my input one over here so inside this input one whatever the value is present that value i just want to console that's what i want to do input dot value as soon as i do this i'm getting some error here what is that it is saying that this particular value is not available on the type html element so it's saying that it's not available on html element so what we can do for that so this particular value is only available on html input element it's not available on html element so we need to do a type casting here so for that we need to write here as html input element let me just keep it down so that you can understand it okay fine so hope it's visible now so we are forcefully converting this html input html element inside an html input element using a type casting here and now the error gone because this value is available inside html input element and now if i just see the output i should be able to see in console abc but we are not getting it what could be the reason let me show you both files and now you try to troubleshoot what the error is so here we are trying to get input one converting as html input element and just trying to uh, have the value of that particular input inside my console inside my html the script file is very well connected the compilation is also happening very correctly let's verify yes compilation is also happening and we are also having our input uh, html input element very well with the correct input and the values also present there with abc but why we are getting this error the error is saying that cannot read the property of null on line number five it's saying that cannot read property null of value on line number five it is saying that it is not able to detect the input element in your html what could be the reason i'll just pause for a minute so that you can think on it and find the solution yes so what's the reason here so we are executing our code before the execution of this particular html input and that's the reason we are getting this error so we just need to move this uh, uh, scripting code at the end so the html file executes in sequential way so first this is getting executed and our browser knows that there is something called input one and after that these scripts are getting executed where we can get all these values and everything will work smoothly let's save all the files and see the output getting it very perfectly abc let's try to change this value a b c d e getting it in console very perfect now uh, we'll try to understand how it will be a bit uh, trouble when we are using the type casting in an incorrect way right now this input one we know it's a compulsory html input element that's the reason we are doing a forceful conversion but what if by mistakenly input of instead of this id input one mentioning here i'm mentioning over here from the html syntax it's perfectly fine i have given an id call input one to my heading that's not looking a bit correct here but syntax uh, with the syntax pers perspective it's very correct and what's happening when my ts file is trying to read the input one what is coming here it is coming this h1 which is not an html input element 
but we are forcefully converting it to an HTML input element. And let's see what happens in my browser window. So I'll just take a pause for a minute. So you can think on it, what will happen, or you can try on your own. So let's see what's happening in the browser. So the browser says undefined. Of course, because when we are saying input, it's a, it's a normal HTML uh, element. We are forcefully trying to convert to the HTML input element. And on that, the value is not present. That's the reason it is giving an unexpected behavior. So that's the reason when we are using the typecasting, we should be more cautious and we should be much more confident on the type conversion we are doing. Is it correct or not?